All right, what are we talking? You had something? You were talking about something? I don't remember what happened. Um, Did you hit the button? I hit the button, and you were you just got back f- from the bathroom because you had to poop. But mm. now I feel like I need to after all this coffee. Is that is that a thing? Like poop envy? It, uh, it could. Well, yeah, because like, have you ever? It's like uh, contagious. Like been like it's bedtime. Whatever you're laying down, someone gets up to go to the, like your boyfriend or something goes up to the bath. I mean, your girlfriend gets mm-hmm. up to go to the bathroom. And you can hear them peeing standing up. And then <laughs> and then now you have to go? And then all of a sudden you hear that drip and then you're just like, uh, I think I got to go. Mm. Maybe that has something to do with pooping too? Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, every Friday we have this uh, squat session. Um, we have these squats that go on every Friday. And squats. Um, it's Friday morning at 6 a.m. We train with my boy, our boy. Ryan Spencer, super training homegrown, Ryan Spencer. Ryan's been training with super training pretty much just since super training's infancy, not from the very, very beginning, but pretty much so. Was he a paying uh, cus- or client, I guess you would yeah, say? Yeah, he was paying. Or cus- member, there you go. Paying uh, member back in the day, uh, back when we, we charged. Um, and um, yeah, Ryan has been amazing. He's been an amazing lifter for us for a long time. He competed uh, at the Arnold Classic um, probably, shit, probably now six, seven, eight years ago. Um, and he squatted, a, he did a 501 squat. He benched like 314. Um, I don't want to say he pulled like six. Um, competing in the USAPL and also, you know, weighing a buck 65. You know, Ryan's <laughs> a fierce competitor. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, he's a huge reason why. You know, why I wake up so early in the morning and, and why we decided to, uh, you know, get down and dirty with him and train in the morning is because that guy knows how to get after it. Yeah. And he knows how to kind of fight for it. And, um, you know, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be waking up that early in the morning, um, you know, if I didn't think it would be beneficial. So we're, we're popping up, I'm popping up at 4 a.m., because I like to eat before I train, get my meal in. Um, to me, the nutrition side of things is very important. And so I try to make sure I, I'm nourished mm-hmm. before the training session, uh, get some of that in and then, um, you know, get to the gym on time and, and all that kind of stuff. But it's hard to get to the gym on time because I always got to poop. <laughs> I always got to poop. You know, I, I have two poops every morning. It's like, um, it's kind of like when you throw up, you know, when you throw up, mm. When you puke, you know, you let everything out and you're like, whew, man, like I threw up. Okay. Got it over with. I was really fearful. Like I didn't want to throw up because it's just such a horrible thing. But that seems like the situation. Mm -hmm. My body's making me do this. Like I have something in my stomach that it needs to get rid of. Okay. We went through the process. We got rid of it. Everything should be kind of cool now. Mm -hmm. And then five minutes later, you're like, oh no, (laughs) like I got to throw up again. I can't believe it. And there you go. You puke again. And sometimes when you're really sick, you get like the dry heaves. Like you puke oh, and puke and puke. the worst. And you puke and there's like, there's nothing down there anymore. Mm-hmm. There's nothing there to be like drained out. And that's one of the reasons why I hate throwing up is normally when I get sick, um, I get so sick that it ends up being like that where mm. I'm just like, my body wants to get rid of every last drop and it wants to squeeze it out of there. And so I'm throwing up, um, and I'm such a I'm such a baby about it. I hate doing it. <laughs> but I feel like my asshole goes through the same thing. Like I feel like my butthole is going through the same process. It's mm. like I poop and everybody's like, you know, the stomach, the intestines, the butthole. <laughs> Everybody seems to be in agreement, like, okay, we're done. The brain, <laughs> the brain's like, Yep, everything's clear. That's everything. Even my toilet bowl's like, Yep, we cleaned it out. Like mm-hmm. your butthole's all good to go, dried it off, everything's you know, I hit the dryer button on my super secret mm-hmm. toilet and, uh, you know, I feel like I'm on my way and I'm like, okay, everything's chill. I start packing everything up for the gym and I'm getting ready. I load some stuff into the back of the car that I needed for the day and, uh, hop in the car. Every intention on getting here at like 530, 540 <laughs> to get a little extra hamstring work that I wanted to do. I sit in the driver's seat and I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, it, it just immediately, 
stopped me dead in my tracks. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know where I'm going? I'm going nowhere. <laughs> 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 I'm running right now, full sprint to the bathroom, holding the butt cheeks. Mm-hmm. And I got to be careful on even how I run. I like got down real low in this like funky squat position. Yeah. Cause my stomach hurt. So I was trying to like lean forward to like brace the stomach from like hurting, but I didn't want to lean forward so much that, oh. that I blew everything out the back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm in this weird squatty position <laughs> where I got like the feet waddling out. I should actually show you guys the run so you can That'd be great. get an idea of what it looks mm-hmm. like. And then for whatever reason, it just like sat on the toilet, just blew, like, <laughs> just blew it out, it, like it, Dumb and Dumber style, like, feet feet up in the air and everything. Yeah, you know? like like your body just totally ignored the fact that you just unloaded everything. Yeah, like hey, didn't we all have a discussion about this? Didn't we? We were all in agreement. Everybody just a couple minutes ago. It's like when you ask your kid, like hey, you know, use the bathroom. They're like, I went already. You're right. like, are you sure? Like, you, you know, because mm-hmm. we're, we're going on a long drive. We're going to your grandmother's and you know it takes 20 minutes plus there's traffic, mm-hmm. might be in the car for 30 minutes. Just go to the bathroom and try. Just go to the bathroom and try. And they claim that they do. They mm-hmm. probably don't ever do it. <laughs> but five minutes into the trip, they got to go. <laughs> well, my butthole has been behaving the same way as a kid's bladder. <laughs> mm. And it's not, it's not going well. Yeah. I'm, and it's preventing me from getting places on time. And I'm tired of it. I'm just, I'm really concerned about the, uh, like the shuffle thing that you got going on. You think I'm going to pull a hamstring? It, well, there's that, but like, I think, I mean, out of all areas, I have some experience in this area, probably almost equal to you. Um, I kind of, w- once you, once you feel that urge coming, you have to lock it in and stay tight until mm. that wave goes away that's when you sprint to the bathroom Mm. because if you do both while the wave is still coming (laughs) you you'll have (laughs) you'll mess yourself yeah exactly you'll you'll mess your pants so if you stay tight it's kind of like staying tight at the bottom of a squat Mm. you hold it all in that's when you can like you know eventually get over that like hard crampy feeling Mm. then you're good to go i don't even know why it happened and i don't know why like it's been happening late it's been happening lately Mm mm-hmm but it really, I mean, the double poop, it happens every morning. It's really of no surprise at this <laughs> point. Mm-hmm. Um, it happens at the most convenient or most inconvenient time too. Always. Because I, I cook for myself and I cook for my kids. So a lot of times, um, a lot of times I'll cook some, I'll cook up some food and as soon as my stuff is done every single time, like clockwork, <laughs> as soon as it's done, it's nice and warm. Everything looks so good. Mm-hmm. I might even sit down. I might even get a bite in and then I got to go. Yeah. It's like, I got struck by lightning and it's like, you better make a decision now. <laughs> you know, it's either you sit here and mess yourself and keep eating <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah. or, or you, you know, you handle this the way you should and just run off to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As soon as I got, I, I got to the gym this morning, I, I mean... Everyone kind of already knew, but just, you know, like, hey, guys, as soon as I get to the gym, I'm running straight for the bathroom because it's, t- it's poop number two Well, time. that's why we have baby wipes here, too, because how, how gross is it to, to poop at the gym and then have to squat? Right. Like, you can't get the butt as clean as you need to get it with, and th- with regular wiping methods. This is how thoughtful I am. Oh, well, so thank you, man. I appreciate I'm, it. I'm taking a dump, and I'm like, okay, we're squatting today. What if somebody needs to spot me? <laughs> yeah. And they're behind me, and they're just like, dude, Andrew smells like shit. <laughs> so I, I get extra, I get way up in there. Yeah. And just You're clean pu- everything up. You might be the cleanest. You might have the cleanest butthole in the whole gym. Because I so many reps and sets. Mm-hmm. You know, I just... <laughs> Just get in there. I might be able to see my own reflection in that thing. Yeah. Spick and span. It's just... <laughs> I don't want to say it's clean enough to eat off of, but you know. It might be. Or... <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to... <laughs> Man, we got problems. But neither one of us are ever here on time. We can't ever do it on... on. Well, not necessarily like that we're not on time, but we're not as early as we'd like. We're trying to get here a little earlier and it's yeah. just not happening. Yeah. Uh, this morning was, it was kind of tough, uh, just cause I got, it's just, yesterday was one of those days where you're looking at the clock, like, okay, it's seven, look at the clock. All right. It's eight fifteen. Look up at the clock. Okay. It's fuck, like it's 10 o'clock and I still have X, Y, Z to do. And so I got to bed late, but, um, we ended up hitting up the, a new Costco in Elk Grove and it was awesome because, uh, it looked exactly like the Costco that Brian Shaw goes to hmm. in Colorado. It's 
obviously Costco's kind of all look the same. Yeah. But the way this one's situated, it just was like identical to the one he goes to. So I got all fired up and I got all kinds of food last night. But after it was all done, we ate dinner and I looked at my girl and I'm just like, dude, we did it. She's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, we, we won. She's like, what, what are you talking about? Like, it's like 1030. We did all this. We ate dinner. We got groceries. We got meal prepped for tomorrow. And we're in bed by 1030. <laughs> like, we fucking won. <laughs> you know, celebrate yeah. by going right to sleep. <laughs> but it just was like, I didn't think we were going to be able to get it all in. Got it all in. And we did it. Got it in. And then I woke up and got it all out. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody just asked a weird question. Why is it for guys in their 20s to establish a mentor mentee relationship? I don't know what that means. Mentee. Man, man, I think they're basically trying to ask, like, how important is it to establish a mentor relationship? Hmm. That's a serious question. Let's get to, back to uh, more important things like our shits. <laughs> no, actually, uh, I think we're, we've, we've covered that pretty well for this, uh, mm -hmm. this beginning session of this. But uh, this other guy, Jam, he asked uh, about Conor McGregor and, and Khabib. There we go. Who do, who do we think is going to win? Now, Khabib has been ferocious, and uh, he's been very dominant. I mean, he's been one of the more dominant guys to come in in yeah. a while. Um I kind of question though too. Like, I, I know that he's, I know that he's beaten some uh, really good fighters, but um, I don't know, man. Sometimes the UFC is weird, where you think these guys are on a tear, and you think they're the second coming, you know, and then, yeah. and then they're just not. So, I don't think Khabib's been around long enough. Like, that's my answer. Is like, I don't think he's been around long enough to be crowned as some special uh, mm. king. Now, if he you know, makes waste of Conor McGregor very easily and completely dominates him, mm -hmm. then we have something else going on. Um, I don't think Conor McGregor's ever really even been knocked down before uh, in a fight. I mean, I know he's lost some fights and stuff like that. Obviously, Khabib has that wrestling skill. Mm -hmm. He should be able to kind of throw him around a little bit, even uh, as skilled as Conor McGregor is. But I got Conor McGregor in this. I think I, I just think that Conor McGregor is a champion, mm -hmm. and I think that, you know, his loss to Diaz and then, uh, you know, the, the fight after that when it was still pretty close and stuff like that, just the truth of that is Diaz is a badass. I yeah. mean, he's a legit fighter, and and uh, the Diaz brothers, both of them, either one of them can be any great, great fighter on any given day. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to go as far as to compare... Uh, McGregor to Muhammad Ali, but I think that he's probably the closest thing that we'll ever have since no one is really relatable yeah. to what Muhammad Ali was able to do. I'm surprised the uh, uh, odds makers have Khabib in favor by 160 points. Mm. I mean, I guess because McGregor's been out, but yeah, I don't know, man. People get really hyped behind McGregor. I, I just think McGregor, I think he's a... Uh... What I would be nervous about if I, and uh, I'm sure Khabib's not nervous about much. He used to like fight, mm -hmm. ba wrestle bears or something like that. But my concern would be the fact that, um, like, I know McGregor has, when he has had a microphone, he's been going nuts. But he also held off on a lot of that. He didn't go on a world tour. Mm -hmm. The buys for this pay per view are probably, you know, significantly lower than uh, what they've had in the past. Yeah. You know, I've heard heard some preliminary numbers they think they're going to reach, and they don't know if they're going to get to two million buys and things like that. And obviously, it's it's lower than uh, you know uh, Connor and Nate and mm -hmm. and things like that. But but anyway, it's going to be an awesome fight. I'm getting at my house, inviting a lot of people over. Um, tomorrow's going to be a great day. Tomorrow we have the seminar going mm -hmm. on, and uh, after the seminar, I have some people over the house, and we'll have a, a party. And we'll have the fights going on. Um, Joey said she's going to make slutty brownies. Hmm. I was like, Joey, listen, you know, uh, you're you're great. I love having you here. But, you know, you need to understand that I'm married. And mm -hmm. I don't know about this slutty brownie thing. I'm going to have to tell my wife. We might have to report this to April. Right. And I'm going to have to, you know, it's going to be a thing. I don't know about these brownies. Slutty know? brownies. Is that like a, a, a pack of like 10 chicks? I, I, I See, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, we're not shooting a rap video. We've done that before. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're not really <laughs> doing that same yeah. thing. So 
she said something about them being really hot and stuff like that. And I was like, I, you hmm. know, like I, I said, I, I don't know anything about any of this. Extra moist. These slutty, <laughs> these slutty brownies are going to taste delicious and stuff like that. I was like, I, I can't make a comment one way or the other. Sounds amazing, but I don't know what's going on. Hmm. You know, so now I don't, now I'm, now I'm not even concentrating on the fight. I'm just, right, just thinking waiting about these brownies. Yeah. I, <laughs> man, I'm going to try to make it back to your place. So after the, you seven, got a stupid brother, you said, right? Yeah. <laughs> my, my dumbass brother's having a birthday party, but here's what he did, which was a, a total dick move. Cause if it was his birthday party, it's not necessarily like, I mean, yeah, it would be a really big dick move for me to just be like, oh, I'm going to go watch the fight. <laughs> but he's combining his daughter, like, two daughters birthday parties at the same time because they're they're about the same birthday so they're like oh we're just going to combine all of them so now it's like well okay now i'm going to be the asshole brother and the asshole uncle twice if i don't go that's awesome i'm hope but it's like if we do if i go to putting the the pressure on you because of the kids yeah so it it will for my saturday will be seminar here shoot out to lincoln Mm. finish up there and then head back to davis because i dude i really want to I want to. I mean, I want to hang out and watch the fights. So I looked into it. Oh shit! A helicopter is only two hundred fifty k. Okay. Here's the problem: it's only a two seater. Hmm. So, like, that's brand new though. Now, I think if we went used, mm-hmm. we might be able to get a better deal. And then I know that you know some people. I know. I know people. You, you know people, and I know that you know some of your own people. And I bet you that they can get a hookup. I mean, they could probably get an airplane probably for what? Six grand, four grand? Uh, Not an airplane, but a helicopter, I mean. Yeah, I could just get a social security card and trade that for probably a a plane ride, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, or... um, My people need those. Yeah, I mean, maybe you and some of your buddies can throw together a helicopter for us. (laughs) I mean, what do you think? Uh, shit, anything's possible. You have a mechanical background way. a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. You know a little how to bit. fix some cars and things like that? I know how to fix a <laughs> 91 Nissan 240. <laughs> well, there you go. Outside of that, I'm not very familiar. So we'll take that, we'll put a propeller on it, <laughs> and we'll start from there. <laughs> that sounds good. Because you're going to have to get around quick tomorrow. Right. So, and I mean, the two seater thing for the helicopter makes it tough. Might be tough, but. If I just go by myself mm. and use the extra seat, Jasmine's like kind of small. That's true, and she probably kind of stuff her into something, you know, stuff her into a small area. She, right? She's pretty bendy. Yeah, yeah. For you know, a little kid, stick her in there somewhere. She'll be fine. Hmm. And then, where are we gonna? Are we just gonna land in the park next to your place? You can land on the Slinger Mansion. Okay. Land on the roof. I, I just figured that you would the have roof heli- opens up. I don't know if you knew that. Okay, I wasn't sure if your helicopter was going to be parked there or not. I if you were, <laughs> if you were down to move it for the night, it would be. Wouldn't that be great to have a helicopter? I mean, are we going to have vehicles that like are going through the air? We're too stupid for that. Yeah, I mean. No, I don't, I don't, I mean. You think the hoverboards were like too scary of a thing? Like the, them <laughs> igniting on fire <laughs> going down the street? Yeah, or uh, people like falling off of cliffs and shit like yeah. that. We got drones. Drones are cool, but. What if a drone was just powerful enough that you can just hang on to it and like be dropped off somewhere? Allow me to pull up a video. Uh, let me find it. Uh-oh. <laughs> um. Somebody asked me about, uh, there's some good questions coming in, so I'm going to answer some of these. So thank you guys for asking your questions. Hang in there. We're going to get to some of these. Somebody's asking me about my nutrition. I'll write this down. Current nutrition. For now, Andrew and I are having fun. We're messing around here. Current nutrition. Here's where we are in the world. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, we're seeing a video of this guy (laughs) in his underwear, apparently. (laughs) Um, he looks like he's on a toilet bowl and he has what, maybe a hundred drones hooked up to something and he's powering himself off the ground. That's awesome. Yeah. We're not too far away. We're not too far away at all. Oh, he's going down though. I know. You know, uh, being fit and being in good shape and not weighing a lot would be really pivotal. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to have transportation that flies you around like this. why doesn't he have pants on though maybe he does have shorts on but he's wearing black socks so it kind of <laughs> automatically makes it seem like he doesn't have any pants on so that that is why we don't have flying cars and shit 
Cause, yeah, because this guy's wearing black. <laughs> that is such a weird look. The black socks. <laughs> it's like he's got a, just like an umbrella above his head. Like, <laughs> How'd you even find this video? It's amazing. <laughs> Google. But uh, I just, because I, I remember seeing something kind of like uh, what we what you were just saying about drones, and then it, it, mm. it all clicked in my head. It just popped off like that. What do you eat before you get here in the mornings really quick? Uh, so um, I normally have some type of eggs, and I normally have oatmeal. Uh, this morning I went with like a weird combination of things and I probably didn't do it early enough. It's probably part of the reason why I had to run to the bathroom. Mm. But, um, I had oatmeal, I had eggs, very normal. I always have a little bit of cheese following some of Rhino's information, you know, getting the calcium in and, and getting some of the cholesterol and stuff from the eggs and, mm-hmm. um, and, and then, you know, the oats just to kind of get some of the, um, get some type of carbs in and get some fiber in there. Mm-hmm. But then I also was like, you know what? I haven't whipped up bone broth in a while. So I was like, I'll whip up some bone broth. And I kind of drank that with everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the bone broth, I threw in some spinach because I was like, oh, it'd be good to get in some potassium before training. Um, but I think that that might have led to me uh, running to the bathroom. I don't really know. I don't know what the science says about that. But like, I think that eating like induces you going to the bathroom. I think that's actually very clear. Just sometimes like drinking coffee could like expedite something flying out of your butt. Yeah. But what I don't know and what I don't have an understanding of, and I don't know who we can get an answer from is like, does like what you have. So I guess this is a question. The food that you eat at a particular moment, I think it's quite obvious that that food doesn't, does not just go flying through your system. I think that at the very at the very fastest rate that that could possibly happen would probably be in like a six hour window or something. Like, I I don't Mm -hmm. know if it's physically possible for food to enter your mouth and go through your throat and all the things it needs Mm -hmm. to go through and to go flying out of your butt really fast. However, I think what happens, this is the theory, of course, I think that whatever that you have may like induce or may progress along whatever is in your mm-hmm. whatever that last Wh- whatever's line of in the chamber yeah right? whatever's in the chamber before yeah. it comes flying out of your butthole and it might like come out <laughs> it's like a premature birth right <laughs> you're having you're having a premature poop and i think the yeah. longer that you hold on to your poop i think like the drier that it gets and the harder that it gets so if you if you poop early, mm-hmm. your poops are going to be liquidy. Yeah. If you're able even, I don't, I don't know if anybody's ever experienced this before, but if you ever had kind of like bubble guts and you just out of necessity had to kind of hold on to it, mm-hmm. when you actually do end up pooping, you just end up doing a solid sometimes. Mm-hmm. Doing just, me a solid. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a ton of sense because, yeah, I, w- I would have people tell me like, there's no way that like, especially when I used to eat like Jim Boy's tacos, that shit would just launch right out of me. But I would have people like, dude, there's no way, like it takes X amount of hours to digest in your system. It just, it's just impossible. But what I think what you just said, which is, yeah, whatever it is, like the greasy ass tacos, it just kind of like lubes everything up to just shoot out whatever was in the chamber. I think, I think you are onto something. So kind of here's what it would look like. (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) This is the chamber, chamber of commerce, the chamber (laughs) <laughs> and here's the butt <laughs> hole. So I made a map so people can kind of better go. understand. So hold it up to your face. I'm going to hold it up here first oh, so people can see on Instagram. We got Jim Boy's tacos. We got the poop that's in the chamber. Mm-hmm. And we got Andrew's butthole down at the bottom. So generous. And then I'll hold it up to my face here. As you can kind of see, there's probably a little bit of a glare on there. Mm-hmm. Jim Boy's tacos. Mm-hmm. And then whatever was in the chamber, okay, Jim Boy's Tacos is causing irritation to the stomach and it's making your brain go, hey man, we can't hold on to all this. We got too many different things going on. I don't know what was in that Jim Boy's Tacos, but we this whatever's in the chamber, it's got to come flying out now because we got to make some room fast. And then Jim Boy's, or uh, whatever was here in the chamber, some uh, Krispy Kreme or whatever it was mm-hmm. from the day, from uh, the night before. And then it goes here to the butthole. Oh, that's my butthole? Yeah. 
It's kind of, it's pretty it's small. small. Yeah, it's been taking a beating for many years, but it's, yeah. held, it's held together. Wow. Your balloon knot is held together nicely. <laughs> the starfish. Yeah. <laughs> it looks great. Hey, it looks great. Thanks. I mean, uh, how old do you say you were? 33? 33, 33 yeah. Yeah, you're 33. Your butthole looks doesn't look older than 20. Thank I you. I mean. <laughs> That's the nicest thing anyone's <laughs> ever said to me. Yeah, I mean, I got the opposite thing going on. I'm 41. My butthole looks like it's 70. Oh, man. I mean, it's been through some battles. Is there butthole rejuvenating surgery available yet? Uh, I'm sure we can find some people that can uh, give us information on. <laughs> like, how do I get a quote? Like, just for a friend? Yeah, just, yeah. Can we get an estimate? Right. I mean, this podcast has a pretty good reach. Somebody's got to know. Yeah. Please uh, send in your uh, information so we can get to the bottom of this, this so to speak. Such a drop in knowledge from Gabrielle Lyon to, but that, that chart was amazing though. Yeah. And you know, we've had doctors on here with all kinds of mm -hmm. people, but no one's ever drew, you know, drew a chart like this. It makes the most sense. I mean, this is pretty simple. It's, uh, you know, I, it's not my best work, but you know, it's, it's up there. I think it's pretty good. It's up there. So we got some questions that have been flying in here and, uh, somebody said, what's my current nutrition plan? First of all, we got to, you know, get everybody fired up and get everybody to understand. We got this 14 weeks to Christmas thing going on 14 weeks to Christmas, mm. right? And, um, some people have been super excited about the information that, that I'm uh, giving out. Uh, so excited, in fact, that we have over a thousand people, uh, on our Facebook fan page, Operation Get Less Fatterist is what it's called. Uh, we have a Facebook group for it. A lot of people are popping in there with a lot of questions and are posting pictures and people are excited because every year going into Christmas, people tend to gain weight. This year, we're going to award that off and we're going to make sure that not only do we not gain weight, but we're also going to get in the best shape of our lives and I've been, I've been keeping it really slow and I've been keeping it really simple because, um, I think it's a giant mistake. People dive in full blast, full bore. And what do they do? That's it. Monday morning. I'm starting. That's it. I'm not, it's Saturday, right? And they're drinking and you know, they're eating pizza with their buddies and they're thinking in the back of their head, they don't want to tell their buddies anything. So they don't want anybody to think that they're weird. So they don't really say anything, but they're thinking in the back of their heads, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. Um, I'm not going to say anything to anybody here cause I'm going to be a buzzkill and, uh, <laughs> keep it to myself. But on Monday, I I'm starting to diet on Monday. So Sunday rolls around and, uh, you know, they have a hangover. So they have Taco Bell and they take the normal precautions for hangovers, which is to eat a bunch of junk and uh, try to sleep a lot and uh, not move much, right? Monday morning rolls around. They're like, okay, a.m. fasted cardio. And uh, then they eat at like noon and they don't prepare a meal. And their first meal is not great. Uh, now it's two o'clock. They feel like shit. They were planning on a double day of training. They get through work for the day. It's now 6 p.m., they have an opportunity to lift, but they feel too tired, too fatigued, um, and they don't feel great from yesterday from the junk food that they ate. So the day's a scratch. They didn't really make much progress. They did get some cardio in in the morning, some fasted cardio, but they didn't eat enough to really nourish their body, and they were trying to be fancy, and they weren't being consistent, as we know from our boy Jay Cutler, that that's the way to be, is to be consistent and to be constant and to have kind of constant tension on everything all the time. Um, and so what I decided to do is like, screw all that. Let's baby step this thing. Uh, I have done this with every single thing that I've ever done in my life. I have power lifted everything, every single thing I've ever done in my life. Um, I like to use the term lift through it. You know, lift, lift through it, not live through it, lift through it. Because in powerlifting, you load up a bunch of weight. You know, first of all, you warm up, you do what you do, what you need to do to get to a heavy weight, but you really take your time. You take your time. And it's so crucial that you take your time. In fact, it's so important and so crucial that you take your time that if you don't take your time, you're not going to even be able to lift the maximum amount of weight. We've seen it many times here at super training when people jump the gun and they want to get to a weight too fast and they actually miss a lift, uh, because they didn't take those intermittent weights and take those smaller weights beforehand to kind of prime the body and prime yourself for 
those heavier weights. And also, there's also something called um, self-doubt. And you have to learn to believe in yourself and you have to learn to gain encouragement for yourself. Part of the reason why we train together in the morning on Fridays and why it's so important is because we see one guy go up and wait and then the next guy wants to go up and wait. And the next guy wants to go up and wait. And the next guy has nothing to do with, you know, I'm using four plates and everybody else wants to use four plates. It's no, I'm using four plates. They saw me go from 365 to four plates. They want to go from 225 to 275. Everyone's still staying in their lane and everyone's still getting the reps. As with today and many other days we've had, nobody's missing reps. Everyone's getting their work in. Everyone's doing what they're supposed to do. And beyond that, everyone's getting their work in that they're supposed to do and then some. And that's what I'm trying to do with this diet. I want people to get their work in and then some. I want there to always be some left in the tank. I don't want people to be washed out. I don't want people to be washed up within the first week. And so that's why it's not exhaustive. That's why we talked about getting in your 10 minute walks. That's why we talked about, um, we talked about meal frequency. We've talked about I just mentioned yesterday some simple things about food. You know, here are the foods that you're supposed to be eating on this diet so far. And you're going to notice I haven't really mentioned much about how much to eat because that's not the game. That's not the game. Counting calories, calories in, calories out, and equating uh, how many calories you burn when you blink your eyes and when you fidget and stuff. Give me a goddamn break. <laughs> It's all, this is all a bunch of bullshit. It does work. You can factor all these things in, but it's unnecessary. You don't need to do that. You need to learn what's nutritious. You need to learn about yourself. You need to learn what feels good to your stomach. You need to learn what to eat before you work out. You need to learn what to eat after you work out. You need to learn to eat or what to have during your training session. You need to learn what to eat before you go to bed. Not before I go to bed, before you go to bed. I can give you suggestions and I can give you recommendations, but your stomach is different than mine. Your body is different than mine. Your nipples are different than mine. Your wiener is different than mine. Your balls are different than mine. Your feet are different than mine. Everything we have is different than then everything else, everything everybody else has, right? There's eight, about 8 billion people on this planet. None of us are the same. Uh, we're all very different. Might have people that look the same. There might be some bloated faced son of a bitch that has a space between his teeth that looks exactly like me, <laughs> but we're probably nothing alike. Correct? We all kind of know these things, right? Our bodies are going to react differently to different things. We do know that humans need food. We do know that humans need water. We do know that humans need sleep. We do know that human beings make poor decisions when they don't sleep enough. We do know that human beings make poor decisions when they are not hydrated well enough. We do know that human beings make poor decisions when they don't have enough of anything. When you are without, uh, you are kind of in doubt. You're, you're not sure of yourself. You're not sure of the correct decision to make. Food cravings are going to heighten when you are in a food restricted state. And so the main thing is to learn about what foods can you eat and what foods should you avoid. That's the game. That's what we're trying to figure out. And how do we turn up our belief system? How do we encourage one another better? How do we feel better about ourselves so we have enough energy to get through each and every day, but not just get through each and every day? You ever ask somebody how they're doing? They're like, I'm hanging in there, man. <laughs> what in the hell kind of answer is that? What do you mean you're hanging in there? Hanging in there from what? Um, life is not hard. Life is fun. Shouldn't say you're hanging. What a crappy, <laughs> what a crappy mindset. Probably said that because you heard somebody else say that. Let's stop saying shit like that. Somebody says, how you feeling? Give them a realistic answer. If you're tired, you can tell them you're tired. If you're fired up, tell them you're fired up. <laughs> If you feel great, I always tell people that I feel great pretty much no matter what, because I like to lie to myself because I like to actually feel great. Mm. I figure if I say that I feel great over and over again, I'm going to feel great. I feel that if I smile a lot, then I'm going to be happier. Yeah. I feel if I tell a joke before I do a lift, I'm going to be more relaxed. Mm -hmm. If I feel like, um, you know, before I do a lift, if I think that I'm strong, 
I tend to be stronger. Yeah, well, it's kind of like what Gabrielle was talking about yesterday with old people, right? You know, once the, once they hit a certain age, they're supposed to be a little old and, you know, uh, in pain here and there, hunched over or whatever. Oh, it's okay. It's because you're old. Right. But what you're saying is like, no, I feel great, so I'm going to feel great. I'm going to be strong right now for this lift, so I'm going to, yeah. So I... I and I am 100% in belief of all that because there's times when I question myself during whatever lift we're about to do. And anytime I have the split second hesitation, I miss that fucking lift. <laughs> and it's so frustrating because I know it's all me. Yeah. Um, that, that, and, and the reason, you know, a- Andrew is, is younger than me. And, uh, you know, we have met each other at a, at a really, really cool time. You know, I, I met him at a really cool time in his life. Um, he was doing a job that, you know, he didn't like doing. And, and now you get a lot of fulfillment out of the current job yeah. that you have. And, um, you know, it's just, you're just in a totally different, totally different world, totally different mindset. Mm-hmm. And it's not like I know everything, but I can help mentor a lot of the people in here. Yeah. And it's not like you're a kid either. So it's, you don't even need like a, a, a mentor mm-hmm. or a father figure or anything like that. But, um, it is nice to have somebody with more experience who can say, mm-hmm. hey, man, like, that's, like, life doesn't need to be that way. Like, yeah. Things can be really cool. And you and I have talked about relationships before, and you've talked about how blessed you've been mm-hmm. with your relationship, and I've talked about how blessed I've been with mine, to where it's like, wow, holy crap, like, this is... This is what it's like to have a girlfriend. This is awesome. <laughs> like, and you've had previous relationships mm-hmm. and they didn't feel the same way. Right. And you're like, man, this, okay. We argue, we fight and like, none of it seems worth it. I don't even know. I don't, I don't understand why, <laughs> Yeah. why we're together. Like we seem to butt heads and nothing makes any sense. Mm-hmm. I think that's the only like, uh, di- different thing about, uh, the relationships that we have now is I went through some shit. And you, you kind of found Andy right away. Well, not right away, but, you know, mm-hmm. you weren't yeah. previously married. I've yeah. been previously married, and I've I've been through some shit. So, so now I appreciate everything so much more, but I got really lucky. Like, I, I shouldn't be this lucky right now <laughs> with, with the girl I found. And it, it's, a, it's a good life lesson. Um, your struggle, whatever your struggle is, Maybe it shouldn't be that hard of a struggle. Mm-hmm. You know, think about the job that you had before. <clears throat> think about trying to climb the ladder or even if there was a ladder to climb in oh, the company man. that you were in, mm-hmm. um, what a bunch of bullshit it would have been to try to maneuver around mm-hmm. in that company and try to kiss ass and try to figure out. Oh, it's the worst. Yeah. Man. Like, how do I. Just the, the whole, the whole thing is just so like ass backwards. Um, my, that's actually how I met my girl. And she still works there. Uh, we're I'm working to get her out of there. But uh, she had made an Instagram post. Um, I think she was just showing off food, or she was working with our daughter or something. And her computer screen was way in the background, and it was blurred out. <clears throat> somebody from her company, <clears throat> somebody from her company, ended up reporting the post, saying that she's showing off like uh, patient information or oh, something. Yeah. And they freaked out. They're like, she has thousands of followers. <clears throat> you know, it's the, da, 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 yeah. like going nuts. Like this, this shouldn't be happening. And I'm like, what's their Instagram look like? Like nobody's talking about it. Mm-hmm. Like these idiots should look at you and be like, we need to hire you to do our marketing. Because like, right, we right. don't know what the fuck we're doing. I was like, for somebody to just randomly find you and you know report you or whatever, I'm like, so that means you're you're more impactful than their own shit right now. <laughs> right. Like, but that's how stupid they are. They don't see that. And long story short, she ended up just getting a warning, but it was like, right. like, like really? Like, and the picture showed nothing, but they were like, no, it shows the screen. Like, that's a HIPAA violation or some stupid oh, shit like that. Yeah. But like, they're so by the book, they can't look at something like that and be like, mm. well, wait, hold on. Like, maybe we have something to learn here. Right. Maybe we're using your skills the wrong way. And then when it comes to climbing that ladder, it's really just like a, um, a longevity thing. If you can stick it out longer than anybody else, that's when you're going to get paid. Right. Which fucking sucks. Yeah. And also, too, a lot of times what happens, uh, you do stick it out and you're 40 or 42 or 43 or 45. Mm-hmm. And then there's there's just not a lot of loyalty towards you. So no. they're like, oh, you know what? You're making 80 a year. 
you have full benefits, you have pension or whatever, whatever it is you have, you got this fat setup, right? Or at least they think it's a fat setup. Yeah. And, um, they're like, you know what? Actually we could pay three kids can come in and, and, and work in three different spots and smoke you on everything. Cause you've been here for so long. You're old. Mm -hmm. You're not working as fast as you were working before. Yeah. And we can get, you know, three kids at 30 K to come in here and just. You know, yeah, really do a triple the amount of work, right? And and unfortunately, that's that's really accurate because what they do is you have uh, a set expectation. You know, it's expectation you can do this much work in this much time. Well, something happened, and now you have to work this much time, but you have to get this much work done. Then you have to get more work done in the same amount of time. And if you can't do it, then okay, <sighs> now we have to look into why you can't do it because. Right. Susan down the way can do it. Yeah. Even though she doesn't know what she's doing. <laughs> but she can, you can't, yeah. what's the problem here? And then it just, it, it just builds like horrible anxiety in that atmosphere. Yeah. And unfortunately those kind of businesses, they don't, they don't have, um, you know, I, I hate to, uh, to be, uh, like a complainer about stuff. Cause I, I just, I feel it doesn't add a ton of value to the world. But at the same time, I think that some companies are just set up in a way where, um, the people that are at the top, maybe they're under so much stress, they're not thinking about their people. And, uh, I think it's more important to think about your people. You have to, it's, <laughs> it's insane what people are looking for. It really is. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's so, what people are looking for is, I don't, I don't know how to say this the right way. It's on such a smaller level than what you think. All people are looking for you to do is to say, you know what, Andrew, you're doing a great job. Mm -hmm. You're really valuable to this company. I, I love that you're here. This is awesome. Yeah. That's all, that's all that they want. Like they, obviously the money is huge, right? Like it, it's, you have to feed your family. Like, um, as your value goes up, like, of course, right? Like all these things are. They're definitely important, but if you take the time to tell someone how important they are, or if you communicate to me like, Hey man, I, I don't know what's wrong, but I'm just not feeling good today. Or, uh, you know, if, if you, if you called me with anything, I would say, you know, whatever I would just say, ask you what you would want to do. Mm -hmm. Like if you said, Hey man, like, uh, you know, I don't know, got in an argument with my girl and like just uh shitty day. I'd say, hey, what do you want to do? You want to come in and train? Mm -hmm. Do you want to not work? Like, what do you want? How do how do we? You know, do you need mm -hmm. help? Like, it, you know, you want to want to hang out? Like, want to have a beer? Want to watch a fight? Want to like? Right. I would like try to figure it out, and maybe I don't always have time to to do that, but I might contact somebody else and say, Smokey, like, I don't know, Andrew's bummed out, man. I don't mm -hmm. know what happened, but let's fig let's get around him. Yeah, we've done that a million times yeah. in this gym when people are hurt. When people have an injury, somebody uh, breaks an arm or somebody's hurt their knee or, or whatever the situation, whatever the struggle is, or somebody has a birthday, we, we just try to like make a big deal of it. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we make a big deal of it is because it is a big deal. Yeah. There's not that many people that work here and we might as well celebrate people. And when people, when somebody does, does a good job, we might as well point it out. You know, we've, mm -hmm. we've gone on trips and we've done different things and <clears throat> in the meetings that we have, um, every Thursday, um, not every time. I mean, someone's not, you're not going to get a pat on the back every time you do everything. And so <clears throat> you should understand that sometimes uh, due to how fast everything's moving, you're, you're not, maybe not always going to get a pat on the back for everything that you do. Mm -hmm. Um, and you shouldn't be necessarily looking for one because you should be doing your job. But at the same time, we've had plenty of times where other people in the company, uh, not just Andy and I or something are praising other mm. people that work here. Yeah. Like, Hey, you know what? Rosemary's doing, been doing a great job because I heard this or, uh, we'll get, uh, someone on Instagram saying, I came to the gym, mm -hmm. I'm a nobody. And, uh, everybody treated me like I was a King. I got people spotting me and people teaching me how to lift and a uh, great experience at super training. And my, the whole point of what I've been talking about here, and I'm relating this all back to this 14 week diet thing or 12 week diet plan, sorry. Um, is that the struggle that you go through, like there's always going to be a struggle. There's always going to be a fight. And a lot of times the price that you pay, um, 
will end up turning into something great later on. The price that you pay now uh, is going to pay off later on. But maybe what you're going through shouldn't be so hard either. Like your Mm. relationship shouldn't be hard. Your job, while it could be difficult, it's not easy all the time. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's some stress involved, but it should be pretty healthy stress. Mm -hmm. It should be... It should be like self-induced stress, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, I know certain jobs have certain things that have to be done at certain times, and there's probably no other way to get around it. You know, if you're a mechanic, you got to work, you got to work on a bunch of cars every day. I mean, there's not any way around it. But in my opinion, the struggle that you go through doesn't have to be so hard. And that's what I'm trying to teach people with this diet is that there's going to be, there's going to be some suffering. There's going to be some sacrifice. There's going to be some things that are hard. There's going to be some things that you give up, but the way that I'm introducing this to you, and I strongly urge that anybody listening to this, you jump in on it because this is going to be fun and we're going to do it together. Anybody who's ever said, I can't, I'm going to show you that you can, and we're going to do this together. I'm going to help people the best that I possibly can. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to jump on that Facebook fan page yet, but I will be soon and I'm going to do it uh, multiple times a week and I'm going to answer questions on there. It's all free. Um, this has nothing to do with any sort of publicity stunt. This has nothing to do with, um, I'm not trying to turn this into an ebook. I'm not trying to uh, make any money off of you. I'm just sharing my knowledge because I feel that I have enough of it. And I feel that, uh, I can help people through the holiday season. I can help them, uh, not only, uh, ward off gaining a bunch of fat during the holidays, but also, Get in the best shape of their life. And the struggle that you go through, the things that are hard, I know that a lot of people want to make more money. Making more money than you did the year before is not hard. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Making more money than it, you did the year before isn't hard. Um, what could be hard is to figure out the type of job that you want. That could be difficult. Mm-hmm. And maybe you got to go through some shit for that, even to end up in the right spot, right? Mm -hmm. That makes some sense. Um, Maybe you got to be an intern for three or four years somewhere. Yeah, it's it's really what what makes it hard is just figuring out what you're willing to sacrifice. Yeah, you know, because like uh, at my last job, it was it was really cushy. Like I got paid well, amazing benefits, and I worked from home. If I wanted more money, that meant I had to work in various offices. Mm And it's like, oh <laughs> man. But I I actually I I didn't want to do that, not because I was being lazy, but because it would have took time away from my photography. Right. Because I knew I wasn't gonna be working in the, uh that job forever. Mm-hmm. I knew photography was my way out. So I was not willing to sacrifice that right. for more money. Right. Instead I was in a weird way willing to sacrifice that complete the whole job completely for moving on to something else. And if you look at your like photography as kind of a metaphor for some of this, you know, what are you willing to give up for one thing versus the other, you know, going out and having some drinks with your friends. Yeah, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, man, like being the same is not great. Being the same as you were the year before is not great. Um, Living, you know, living in your hometown your entire life and hanging around the same friends that have the same uh, kind of crap mentality. They're always complaining about the same things and no one ever fixes anything. Mm -hmm. No one ever moves up. No one ever has an idea or creation or business or product or. No one's excited for something. Yeah. They're excited for like a slice of pizza, but they're not excited like, holy shit, dude. Guess who I'm working with now? (laughs) Yeah. The only thing that's coming up for a lot of people is just like another holiday. Yeah. Or yeah. maybe a, a summer vacation or maybe, um, you know, like a UFC fight or a WWE pay-per-view or like, there's really just not, there's not a strong enough like pull. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think, and uh, this is like a Tony Robbins thing and people think he's corny and he can be, right? Because uh, he's so enthusiastic, but... You know, Tony Robbins kind of talks about people trying to push their way through life. Like they're really pushing, 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 pushing towards this, pushing towards that and shoving their way into this and shoving their way into that. Mm-hmm. And and you shouldn't be. You should be actually pulled towards stuff. And when there's a pull and when the pull is strong enough, it's like undeniable. And 
you kind of just end up fitting into stuff. And, and, and again, like you're going to say, shit, man, dude, just tell me what to eat because <laughs> I want to follow your plan. You know, what does this have to do with eating? <laughs> it has everything to do with eating because your pull towards wanting to be better. If you do this the right way and you do it gradually, it'll be so strong. Your pull will be so strong. Trust me when I say this, your pull will be so strong that when I say, Hey, on, uh, October 31st on Halloween, have at it, eat as much candy as you want. Hmm. You know what you're going to end up saying? You know, saying, I don't want to do that shit. <laughs> yeah. And you're not going to believe me now when I say stuff like that. And maybe that doesn't happen the first time that I recommend a cheat to some of you guys, but it will happen. It will happen the further you move down the line. I, I know firsthand because I've seen it happen. And when Joel Green was on our podcast, he said that kind of stuff can happen within two weeks. Damn. He said that kind of change can happen in two weeks because what's happening is from like a scientific standpoint, your body is never actually really getting what it needs. Mm. It's, it's just the thought. Mm -hmm. It's like cheating on a girlfriend or cheating on a wife or so something like that, where this other thing that's in front of you looks sexy and attractive, but man, that's not really what you want. Yeah, that's okay. We all get it. Everyone gets it. Everyone has urges. Everyone has impulses. Everyone, you know, sees the chocolate sundae and they're frothing at the mouth. Oh, mm -hmm. dude. Or somebody sees a vanilla latte or somebody sees a beautiful woman or a beautiful man. Oh my God, that girl's so hot. Oh my God, that guy's so hot. Yeah, we get it, right? We get it. But that's not actually really what you want. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you're in, you know, sometimes people are in relationships that just, that aren't working. And that's a kind of a different story. Mm -hmm. And that's not what I'm talking about, but you're, what you're going to, what you're going to give up is going to be greater than what you get. And that's something that you need to understand what you're going to give up is going to be greater than what you're going to get. So when you go and, and give up your diet for a bender, you're, you're giving up too much. You just made a bunch of progress. Like, what are you doing? Pump mm -hmm. the brakes, man, because this is not going to work well for you. Um, if you know that, let's say that, look, man, at this point in your life, you should have collected some data on what's going on in your life, right? Um, there's all these studies and people are talking about this and that all the time. And you need eight hours of sleep. And this guy's saying you need this kind of food. And this guy's promoting this, this guy's promoting that. You should have your own data on your own self. And you should know without an app, without ever writing anything down, you should know that if on Thursday night football, you go out and have some drinks with your friend and some wings and some pizza. And every single time that you do that. Friday rolls around and you say, screw it. I, I, you know, I already, I already ate whatever I wanted. I already got drunk on Thursday. Mm -hmm. I'll do the same thing today. Mm -hmm. And it happens on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or maybe you're a younger kid and you're in college and you're kind of doing, you're falling into these traps. Stop falling into the traps. You have enough evidence. You have enough, uh, scientific proof that for whatever reason, that method that you're utilizing or that uh, schedule or that routine is not working for you. It's not working for you anymore. Mm -hmm. Whatever, whatever it was, uh, like hopefully you've done it enough times. Like you already know what a chocolate sundae tastes like. You already know what pizza tastes like. You already know what a, a sub tastes like from your favorite sandwich shop. Uh, do you really have to have it every single Tuesday? No, you don't, you don't need it. You want it, right? You want it. And that's a big difference. Um, and you can have what you want, but you have to get yourself in a position to where you feel the way that you want to feel. You deserve it. You deserve to feel the way that you want to feel. Mm -hmm. When you go lift a weight and you're stronger each time you work out, that's something that you earn. That's something that you worked for. And it doesn't happen by accident. It happens through proper rest, proper nutrition everything's got to be in line if you're going to be stronger every single time you hit the gym. Everything has to be in line. And in order for that to happen over a long period of time, you got to be, <laughs> you got to really be on point. Uh, I'm going to dive into some of these uh, foods right now because I know that you guys have been anxiously awaiting. And I have mentioned them. I mentioned them on my Instagram. But uh, for those of you following along for the first time, um, 
I don't want to get too much into the weeds on uh, like calories um, and shit like that. But the basic gist of it is I want you guys walking. I I want you guys walking twice a day for 10 minutes. Um, I haven't missed a 10 minute walk on a particular day uh, probably in two years. I, I walk every single day. I always get in at least one 10 minute walk. Um, today I got in one 10 minute, 10 minute walk after our workout. It was probably mm-hmm. more like a 15 minute walk. Um, I'll definitely get one in, uh, sometime later today, maybe at like four or five o'clock or, um, uh, before I go to bed. It's not, it's just, it's, it's, it's easy. It's easy. Anyone can go for a walk, right? I want you to walk. I want you to pay attention to sleeping more. We know there's an eight hour recommendation to sleep. We know there's a lot of scientific data that shows that when you get eight, eight hours of sleep, it's the most optimal, right? We know that you not only need eight hours of sleep, but it needs to be like a really restful sleep. We know a lot of these things, right? But I don't want you to focus in on eight hours. I want you just to focus in on sleeping more. If you currently sleep four hours a night, I want you to sleep four and a half. If you currently sleep four hours a night, I want you to concentrate on four minutes or four hours and 15 seconds, things like that. Just let's make some small steps, but let's make progress. Let's work on getting better. Hopefully two months from now, your four hours of sleep is six hours of sleep. How great is that? You get an extra two hours every single day. You'll probably feel awesome. Here's some of the foods that I'd like you to utilize for this stage of the diet. There's going to be many stages to this diet. Let's go over protein because I think protein is the most important. And I think it's uh, probably what people are missing out on the most. And uh, it's what people can overeat on the most and without, with the least amount of uh, negative uh, feedback. Um, Protein is really simple. Any form of meat. That includes um, cow meat. That includes uh, anything, uh, pork. Um, bison, elk, uh, chicken, turkey, I mean, you know, you name it and it's, if it's game meat or if it's, uh, just hamburger meat, anything, just have some damn meat. Uh, eggs are also on the list. Um, and then any sort of dairy. Now this is all dependent on whether you can actually digest this stuff or not. If you're lactose intolerant, then don't have dairy. Hmm. Uh, if you know that you uh, suck eating eggs, then don't eat eggs. Um, eggs versus egg whites, um, you know, cheese, dairy, uh, 2% milk. For, don't worry about any of that stuff. Um, I would suggest for now, just go full fat on everything. Get full fat milk, eat cheese. Don't worry about the fat calories in there. Uh, let's work on getting nutrition and getting nutritious stuff. Um, to supply our bodies with what we need every single day to make progress and, and to be able to exercise and lift and to be in this for the long run. Uh, full fat cheese tastes better than fat free mm-hmm. cheese. How the hell are we going to eat fat free cheese every day if we don't like the taste of it? It's going to suck, right? Mm-hmm. How the hell are we going to eat eggs every day if we're only eating egg whites? We're not going to last very long doing that probably. And, and, you know, whether you're a professional bodybuilder or something like that, it's different, right? Those guys are doing some different shit in terms of your steak, uh, or in terms of your red meat. Um, I personally like fillets a lot. Um, now a fillet ends up being a really, uh, great cut of meat because, um, you can heat it and re-eat it very easily. Now the tougher the steak or the leaner the steak, the more problematic it might be mm-hmm. like a New York strip. <clears throat> unfortunately, a New York strip, if you cooked it up the night before and eat it the next day, it kind of turns into a hockey puck. Yeah, that's what I'm struggling with right now. Um, there's not a lot of great things you can do. You could try to, like, uh, you know, undercook it a little bit, like have it a little bit more rare than normal, but even that's not great because it's just microwaving stuff, too. You, you got to be a little careful with microwaving stuff. Like, if you're going to microwave steak, it's going to just turn weird. Mm-hmm. Um, even sometimes chicken can turn weird. What I would suggest is those of you that are messing with chicken stock or bone broth, heat up your chicken stock or bone broth and pour it on top of your meat. If Mm. you want your meat and your stuff to be warm, um, and and you can still, uh, maybe warm things up, but warm them up separately. 
and uh you know try to keep your meat <laughs> <laughs> keep your meat out of the microwave because uh it's just not that it's uh it has nothing to do with uh like health or anything this is just purely on uh taste um having that meat heated up sometimes isn't great ground beef now on the other hand heats up pretty good mm -hmm. it normally is fine when you heat it up it actually works out really well because you get that layer of like white fat on it and it gets to be really gross but then when you heat it up it dissipates into some of the other foods that you have um combining foods can be really important taking your steak and being able to eat it with some spinach or a tomato uh cucumber anything um what does my wife wife always cook zucchini anything that's like wet or moist when you eat uh when you eat your meat with anything <laughs> wet or moist it's going to make it go down a lot easier so those are some uh those are some kind of easy suggestions in terms of the meat get your in terms get, of the meat get your meat moist and wet so it goes down easier mhm mm i like it you can also Another trick too is to is to chuck some butter on there or throw some cheese on some stuff. Like just for now, we're not really worried. We're not worried about calories. You know, we're not going hog wild either. But let's not really worry too much about calories. And uh, you know, if you feel like throwing some cheese on something because you want it to taste a little bit better, mm -hmm. go for it. Now I just said a little bit of cheese, so don't go <laughs> crazy. Um, Bobby in the uh, chat room over here on YouTube's. Um, What's up, Bobby? Yeah, he's just asking, uh, what about like a, a roast versus a steak? So like a roast has a little bit more fat. Is that cool? Yeah, go for it. Uh, Tri-tip, uh, uh, ribeye. Let's just not even let's just not even worry about it for right now. Just get that protein in. Just get just get the meals in and and get the food in. Um, recommendation. So. Uh, I would say let's try to get a protein source in about three or four times a day, a good, a good protein source in three, four times a day. That's just the minimum, mm -hmm. you know? So if you want to go five or six, then by all means go for it. Um, but you can do, you know, and another protein source too could be protein powder. You can have some sort of protein powder if, if, if you're digging on that and you want to have something post-workout. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of the dairy, um, I forgot to mention like cottage cheese is fine. Yogurt is, yogurt's okay. Let's just avoid, you know, sugary stuff because that's not, that's not really part of, that's one thing that's absent from this diet is sugar. There's not a lot of sugar on there. Um, although we do have some room for it in some capacity. So, all right, there's protein. Let's go over some uh, carbohydrate sources in terms of, uh, let's talk about fruit first. So I'd like you to have two servings of fruit every day. Uh, a serving of fruit would be like an apple. So you can have an apple and an orange, you know, once a day. Um, you can have, you know, one apple in the a.m. and an orange in the p.m. or whatever. Um, but find a fruit that you like and eat it. Um, I think most people like fruit. Find some fruit that you enjoy and eat it. Now, if you're talking about like blueberries or raspberries, they don't come conveniently packaged as like one little unit like an apple does or an orange does. And so therefore you're going to, um, you're going to have to, uh, you know, kind of maybe just have handfuls of it, but like two handfuls of berries in a sitting, uh, would be perfectly fine. Um, if you're not used to eating some of these things, make sure you're chewing them up really well. Make sure you're taking your time eating them because they can kind of bother your stomach if you're not used to eating fruit. And same thing with your vegetables and stuff like that too. But in terms of fruit, fruit's fair game. You can eat as much fruit as you'd like. I'm saying two servings a day. That's kind of the minimum. Um, I don't really think there's a reason to go over like three or four, but you, but it, you technically, uh, you know, I'm going to say that you can. You can you can eat fruit with every meal if you feel like it. Um, for me personally, I've always liked something sweet after dinner, and so sometimes having like a blood orange or an orange. Uh, after a little while after dinner is something I really like. Um, sometimes I might eat that with something else, like some yogurt. I might throw some berries and some yogurt, or I might throw some vanilla protein powder into some yogurt, chuck it in the freezer and throw some berries in there. It kind of turns out, uh, in like an ice cream form does not taste like ice cream, <laughs> but has the feel that the mouth feel of, of ice cream and it's pretty damn good. So one thing that fruit's going to do for, well, a couple of things fruit's going to do for you. <clears throat> Number one, it's going to provide you with uh, a lot of vitamins and minerals. 
but it's also going to provide you with potassium, which potassium can be uh, a very powerful ingredient in terms of your strength performance, your performance in the gym, um, and it could also help a lot with blood pressure. Uh, fructose, um, some people believe that fructose can actually help your thyroid out quite a bit. You know, it's kind of one of those things that's a little bit debatable, um, but fructose is uh, a weird form of carbohydrates, and I, I think that there's definitely a place for it um, in our lives. I think that the human body was designed to eat fruit. I think it's very clear. Uh, uh, fruit will also provide you with some fiber, um, and so that that's going to be good for uh, helping you to digest stuff, helping you ferment stuff, and, and things of that nature. Vegetables. Let's go over some vegetables. All vegetables are fair game. Find vegetables that you like. Some people don't, some people kind of hate vegetables, but then some people forget that like there's a lot of different things in the vegetable category. Before I move on from fruit, I forgot avocado. I think avocado is actually a fruit, um, but avocado is pretty damn good on any diet and it's a great form of fat. Uh, add it in wherever you want. You can make an omelet in the morning um, with some avocado. Avocado, by the way, too, is a, is a great thing to utilize again to make your meat <laughs> slippery um, a lot of times meat can be dry things like chicken and stuff like that can be dry chuck a little bit of cheese and eat some avocado with it mm -hmm. or th throw some salsa on it and some uh and, and a um, avocado don't buy like these pre-mixed weird guacamole mixes that are full of a bunch of bullshit like you know just eat the avocado mm -hmm. e eat eat stuff that you uh, actually chop open yourself. So an avocado is a <laughs> single seeded berry, which means it's a fruit. That's a giant ass berry. A giant ass berry. Mm -hmm. It's a holly berry. Holly berry. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Holly berry. Anyway, <laughs> uh, vegetables, um, you know, anything's kind of fair game. They kind of always say the greener the better because there's usually more nutrients in there and there's... Um, <clears throat> Stan Efforting, our boy, he's a big fan of spinach. Spinach also has potassium in it. Broccoli has potassium in it. Kale has potassium. Kale is loaded with vitamin A and uh, <clears throat> loaded loaded with uh, potassium. Um, I actually take kale and spinach and put it in a blender with cranberry juice. Now, I know that sounds absolutely disgusting, but it's actually really good with some water and some ice. It tastes really good, and a lot of times I'll throw in a scoop or half scoop of vanilla ice cream, or vanilla ice cream, Van I wish vanilla ice cream, vanilla mm -hmm. protein powder uh, in there, <clears throat> and uh, vanilla slingshot protein, and um, ends up being a pretty good drink, pretty good shake. It's really hard. You have to go way out of your way to have the, to have the amount of potassium that you're supposed to have every day. Uh, Stan Efferding's a big fan of carrots. So you can throw in some carrots. They provide you with some fiber. There's some research that shows and take, you know, take research whatever way you want. Um, who knows if it's worth a shit or whatever. <laughs> but uh, there's some research that shows that uh, carrots have a type of fiber in them that can help uh, get rid of estrogens and get rid of certain um, junk in your body and um, can be beneficial. So. You might want, you can actually just look up, if you look up on YouTube, um, a guy named Ray Pete, you can look up Ray Pete talking about carrots and, uh, you look up Ray, Ray Pete, by the way, talking about fructose too. And you get the, uh, all the information about, uh, how fructose can potentially, uh, help your thyroid help your metabolism, help you lose weight. Um, one thing I forgot to mention about, uh, fruit as well is, uh, Something I, I do here and there is uh, I'll have some cranberry juice throughout the day. Again, this is a recommendation from Stan the Rhino Efforting um, because cranberry juice has iodine in it. And so I'll have cranberry juice about twice a day. I'm not swilling down this giant thing of cranberry juice. It's just um, about four ounces of it. Cranberry juice is very pungent and uh, it has a, strong, has a strong flavor to it. So... Um, I actually kind of enjoy the taste, but most people, it tastes like shit. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. But because people need to realize it's not like ocean spray. Yeah. 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 You have to buy uh, organic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and you can't have a bunch of added sugar to it. And, and when you look, every single uh, cranberry juice that you look at is going to be like 50-50 
uh, loaded mm-hmm. with crap and having regular sugar in it. I always uh, get it confused. Is the we want not from concentrate or we want from concentrate? I don't know how much that matters, and I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> that would be great to learn what that means, but uh, basically you just want the one that doesn't have any other ingredients other than cranberries. <laughs> right. That's probably the easiest way to figure it out. So I get, uh, I think it's called Lakewood. I think that's the company. Mm-hmm. That's the one that I buy. Now in terms of, so that's pretty much it for your veggies. Um I'm trying to think some other easy ways to get in vegetables. Now, when you travel, when you go to the airport, um, when you go to some of these convenience stores that are in the airports, they always have these things that have vegetables in them. When you go to a, um, when you go to Starbucks, they have these protein boxes that have fruits and vegetables in them. You can get fruits and vegetables from anywhere. So we want not from concentrate. Sorry to cut you off. Sounds good. Yeah. Not from concentrate. Sounds good. Um, you know, so there's no excuse not to get in uh, some of your veggies. And, and like, you, again, if you, if you don't love them, just try to figure out a way to eat some. Try to figure out a way to eat some. Maybe there's, um, like, you can just take a pepper and just eat it. Yeah. You know, you can take a, you can take a pepper and that's in your fridge. You could take the damn thing out and just eat it. Mm-hmm. And if you kind of wanted to get more creative with it, like, I don't know, you could dip it in some olive oil and some salt. Mm-hmm. Or you could... Uh, you could put a little bit of, um, you could have mozzarella cheese with it and have some balsamic vinegar and some olive oil. And now you're talking about a party. So it's going to yeah. start to taste pretty damn good. Throw some salt on that bitch and you got you got something going on. Yeah, I like it with breakfast, just like a straight bell pepper. Um, it's like real crispy, yeah. crunchy. It, it's, it's, it's really refreshing. It's good. Yeah, I mean, peppers have all kinds of stuff in them that are, you know, they're great for us. So go ahead and have at it. I'm not here, by the way, I'm not here to like, get into a debate about whether vegetables are healthy for you or not. I'm not here to get in a debate about whether fruit is healthy for you or whether fruit juice is healthy for you. What I'm here to get in a debate in and the thing that I'll fight in the street about is people are too fucking fat. That's what I'm, that's what I'm here for. And that's what, that's what I want to do. I want to help change. I want to help change America. I want to help make a big difference in people's lives and teach people that you can do it. All this shit that surrounds us each and every day, all these foods that surround us all the time, they are around us all the time. There's people around us that are going to be negative. When you tell somebody, uh, I'm on a keto diet, they're going to be like, why are you doing that? Uh," You know, right? They're going to give you all this shit. Well, it's like, why the fuck are you still being the same? You know, why are you still the same fat fuck you were yesterday? (laughs) I don't understand. Why are you still 50 pounds overweight? Let's talk about that rather than you coming at me for trying to be on a diet or trying to exercise more. It's not healthy to eat all that fat. That can't (laughs) be good. Yeah, and I'm not here to argue that Hmm. kind of stuff either. I'm not not here to, like, pick a side. I'm not here to make a stake in the, you know, stick a stake in the ground and be like, I'm all keto. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm not here to, and I know I have a book called The War on Carbs. The War on Carbs just happens to be a great name. That's why we <laughs> went with it. It's just fun, right? Yeah. And it, it gives you, it gives you a platform to kind of speak from. And I do think that um, Andrew and I were talking earlier about some people that have had a lot of success on like a vegetarian diet. And we just think that sometimes some of these things are vegan diet. Sometimes some of these things are just because they cut out other crap out of their life. Mm-hmm. Now. Someone could, you know, I, I don't know, guess disprove, the, you know, that uh, humans aren't made to eat, or they can prove that humans aren't made to eat meat and that we should only eat vegetables or something. I don't know. Like maybe somebody can at some point refute all this evidence that we are designed to eat multiple things. Uh, and, you know, we'd have to say, okay, well, we're wrong. Sorry. But um, mm-hmm. that doesn't seem to be the case. But what seems to be the case every single time, whether it's a paleo diet, whether it's the South Beach diet, whether it's the Atkins diet, whether it's my own book, The War on Carbs, um, or whether it's any other style of diet, a Whole30, Weight Watchers, it seems to be that when you get rid of junk, that you end up being more successful with your weight loss and long-term weight loss. One of the big pitfalls of something like Weight Watchers, which by the way, is the same thing as flexible dieting, Flexible dieting and Weight Watchers is the same thing. Um, make no mistake about it. It's just that Weight Watchers gives you a different way of like ha- counting your calories and they have points and stuff. And they, they didn't want people to fall into the trap of having to count calories. So they gave them points, which is actually genius. And why part of the reason why it's a multi-billion dollar franchise. And it's been around for like 30 or 40 years. And it's helped a lot of people lose a lot of weight. 
uh, men and women. But one of the pitfalls of diets like that normally is the fact that there's too much delicious food. There's too much processed food involved. Even they even make their own processed mm-hmm. food, which I say shame on them for that. Yeah. Hey, good for you. You know, America is a land of opportunity. Like, mm-hmm. let's all make some money. But I kind of say, how dare you? Like, what a stupid thing. Like, you're mm-hmm. trying to help people be healthier. You're helping people lose some weight. And I know that losing weight is the key factor. Losing weight is the biggest factor in being healthier. But you're going to make people healthier. But then also, you know, you're going to give mm-hmm. them a bunch of crap. Come on, man. Like, yeah. We got to be better than that. We can't, we can't really do stuff like that. I understand you're trying to give them a nicer alternative, but let's face it. It's just for profit. Like that's all it's for. Right. And so they have money, they have the means so they can make these like Weight Watchers fancy meals and they, they can have, and again, the problem with these style of diets, in my opinion, the problem with something like flexible dieting is that there's too many good foods in there for people to, uh, when when somebody comes away from that diet, in my opinion, they haven't really learned a lot of discipline. They might have learned some discipline to eat a little bit less, but that's not going to be enough because I think they're going to go back to their old ways. At least, at least that's what I, that's been, that's been how, that's been my experience. So I mm-hmm. guess I should kind of say that I'm not, I shouldn't say that everyone is going to end up that way, but that's my experience. If you allow me if you allow me a pop tart, I'm not. I'm just not going to do well. Um, and I know there's been some research too that has shown that. Um, and Lane Norton shared this too. There's been some research that shows if you give people, uh, if you give people more options, they're sometimes more successful. But I, I don't know. I I don't like that. I think that uh, the stricter the better. Mm-hmm. Um, and not at first. And that's kind of why we're diving into these things this way because over a period of time we're going to build up some willpower we're going to build up some strength to be able to be locked into a diet a little bit stronger yeah well have you ever gone to a, like a restaurant where they have everything on the menu <laughs> and you can't figure out what you want yeah i mean they even teach you that about business mm. you know serve everybody and no one want to buy shit wow you know uh <laughs> you think about like uh these big franchise gyms mm-hmm. you know they they're how many fran- how many giant ass franchise gyms have popped up around the country in the last like 10 years, you know? Right. But then only to shut down because all the CrossFits came around, right? <laughs> because when you try to, uh, when you try to be of service to everyone, you're attractive to nobody, mm-hmm. you know? Cause you might go in there and you're like, man, like that's cool that they, that's nice. They have a squat rack, but they just have one. Yeah. It's going to happen at five 30. You know, on a Monday or Thursday. Everyone's trying to curl on the squat rack. <laughs> yeah. the fuck? Everyone's in the damn squat rack. Mm-hmm. And then someone else is going to come in there and be like, wow, this is a great gym. But look, the daycare is kind of small. I'd love to have both my kids be able to go in there. But if there's three other kids in there, my kids won't be able to go in there. Someone else will come in and say, man, I love doing cardio, but they only have one Stairmaster. <laughs> it's because mm-hmm. they have one Stairmaster. They got one squat rack. They got a tiny ass room for kids. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're trying to be attractive to everybody. And in their effort, they're kind of attractive to nobody, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about carbs. Carbohydrates. Oh, my gosh. We're going to talk about some carbs. <laughs> All right. So here's, uh, for those of you just tuning in on uh, that, that haven't been with us the entire time live here, the meats that you can have, pretty much any meat. You can have any type of fish that you want any type of steaks that you want. You can have ground beef, you can have bison, you can have elk, you can have venison, any type of meat, uh, chicken. You can have eggs. Just go ahead and have whole fat eggs, cheese, dairy, get full fat milk, the whole nine yards. Vegetables, and you can have any vegetables that you like. Fruits, you can have any fruits that you like. We're keeping this stuff really simple. How many times a day do I want you to have? And also protein powder. I forgot to mention that for the protein. But also, uh, how many times a day do I want you to eat fruit? I want you to have at least two servings a day. How many times do I want you to eat vegetables? I want you to have it at least twice a day. How many times do I want to see you have protein? I'd like to see a minimum of three times a day. How much protein? Eyeball it. (laughs) Pick out an amount that feels comfortable to you and eat it. Don't make it complicated. Now, if you're packing some food, and this is something that's going to need to be taught. If you're packing some food for the day, why don't you try this on your, you know, going to work. Pack a pound, a pound of, uh, 
a pound of meat, whatever pound, pound and meat, <laughs> whatever, uh, whatever uh, type of meat that you like, pack a pound of it and pack uh, a cup and a half of rice or um, a, one good size sweet potato. Pack that with you for the day. Pack some, uh, pack an apple, pack an orange and pack some almonds with you. There you go. Right? It should be pretty simple. If you feel like you need more meals than that, that, that should actually be two meals. You should be able to break that up into two meals. Um, anyway, let's move forward. We got we got so much more to teach you about meal prep and stuff that it's not even funny. <laughs> Carbohydrates. Rice is always a good source. What kind of rice? I don't really care. Some people will say brown rice has this weird shit in it that takes nutrients away from your body. I don't I just I don't think it matters that much. I do think that white rice is just easier to digest. Uh, that's been my experience, and that's also just my opinion, I think. But uh, I tend to like uh, varieties of rices. I buy, sometimes I'll buy like a sushi rice, or sometimes I'll buy, um, I can't even remember the different ones. I just buy these different brands. Like, like jasmine rice? There you go, jasmine rice. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll buy some different types of rice, and sometimes I'm excited about a long grain, and sometimes I'm excited about a short Short grain. I didn't even know that there was different lengths. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, Andrew, you have a lot to learn. <laughs> Set myself up with that one. Yeah, you know who you could ask about that is Stephanie. She might have some information for Uh-oh. you, buddy. She <laughs> She's gonna not. be say. She's gonna say, "I know something." <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be like, "What? Hold on. Oh my god! I thought you said you didn't go to college." <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? You weren't supposed to have those slutty ears. What happened? Yeah. Wait a second. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so rice, uh, potatoes. What kind of potatoes? Have at it, man. Have some damn potatoes. What I want you to do from the, in this diet is I want you to learn about some different foods that you like that maybe, who knows, man, maybe you never even tried it. Yeah. Like just recently, I didn't really uh, like understand how good sweet potatoes can be. Sweet potatoes. I think going from like having uh, plain rice, plain regular potatoes, and then plain sweet potato, like why the fuck would I mess with these other ones when I can have this one that tastes amazing on its own? Your favorite food is French fries, right? Correct. Now, French fries are in no way comparable to eating a sweet potato, right? Right. But what are some other foods that you really enjoy that are kind of like junk food? Uh, well, I mean, full on junk food or so, well, I mean, pizza is amazing. Like, okay. So uh, let's just take pizza. Okay. If you had the choice to eat pizza or to eat steak and the sweet potato, what do you, what do you think you're going to go with and why? Well, I, I think right now my situation is a little bit different than it used to be. Mm-hmm. Previously, it would have easily been pizza just because it's convenient. <laughs> right. It's easy to chew on. Uh, easy to prepare or just right. go buy. Yeah, it's yeah. cheaper. Just buy it. Yeah, you yeah. Go in a, any store has it like pre cooked too. Even like going to a grocery store. Yeah, a lot you of go times, to like Sprouts. And even it's Costco. Right there. I think yeah. Costco has pizza, right? Yeah, it's, it's like a dollar for it's super cheap. But now it's not even. It, it, last night uh, we had a fr- uh, Jasmine wanted frozen pizza, so made her a frozen pizza, and my girlfriend and I had uh, chicken tortilla soup. And I looked at that pizza and I'm hungry because like, you know, like I was telling you earlier, like we had a really long day and I'm like, oh man, it's going to take every ounce of willpower to say no to this pizza because it looked amazing. But I understood what the goal was and I understood that we we're going to have a long ass day today. So, right. You know, I didn't want to uh, impair my, my workout because of a, a stupid slice of pizza. So when it comes to a steak and a sweet potato, I'm obviously going to select that over a pizza because of how much better I feel. Right. How much better I perform. And then also too, like I I know like uh, more recently, like you haven't been in love with steak and these things happen. Sometimes you just, the taste buds are like, you know what? We're done. Yeah. Let's just say it's, uh, let's say it's chicken Mm -hmm. and, um, and let's say it's chicken and a sweet potato. Now, I'll get into sauces and different things in a little bit because this that part can get a little bit confusing. Um, in general, it's not a great idea to really get used to them, um, mm-hmm. but there there is room for some sometimes. Um, anyway, so you have like chicken and a sweet potato. Mm-hmm. Your your rationale for the pizza? Okay, I I, I love pizza. Pizza's great, right? But it's kind of random. 
and I don't need the pizza right now. The pizza's also going to hurt my stomach. The chicken and the sweet potato, my stomach's going to love me for it. Mm-hmm. My body's going to love me mm-hmm. for it. It's going towards <laughs> all my all my goals that I have. Mm-hmm. I should just eat that. And it's, it's, I'm not going to end up on the toilet as much from that as I am from the, the pizza, right? And But the other thing that happens too, you're like, you know what? That sweet potato is pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. And there's certain situations too where you can kind of, you can kind of add to things a little bit. You don't want to make a habit of, of doing this all the time, but take a little pat of uh, grass fed butter and chuck it on that damn sweet potato. Mm-hmm. You're going to think you'd, and you know, just so you're not too much of a fatty, just do that while you're, while it's hot <laughs> and then put the butter back in the fridge. Mm. Uh, these are things you're going to have to learn to do, but that's going to taste so freaking good yeah. that when you're done eating it, you're going to be like, man, I am so glad that that's what I ate. Yeah. And you're going to be like, fuck the pizza. You know, I don't even care. And you'll see the pizza sitting on the counter. You see the pizza in the fridge the next day or whatever, because there's some left over. You don't even give a shit. Mm-hmm. You don't even care. You're like, I don't, I don't even care about that. It's not even, it's not even a thing anymore because you're like, that was actually really good. Yeah. So and what I'd like you guys, go ahead. No, I was going to say like when, uh, uh, not too long ago, we went out with uh, family to go have. They went and had pizza, and we had poke. It it, it felt awesome, to, like being able to yeah. like uh, not not necessarily like a huge win or like a point on the scoreboard or whatever, but you know we we kind of my girlfriend and I we walked out of that place with our head high. What right. everyone else was like, oh yeah, stuffed right, right. We were like, dude, I feel great. Yeah, and even take like. Take a similar situation, right? Um, let's say you go to a family gathering and uh, you know everyone's going to kind of be, uh, you know, diving into some crazy foods, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe on that day you have something that's a little bit different, just so it just so it feels more like uh, celebratory. Mm-hmm. It feels more fun. Like, you know what? Like, let's, let's marinate some chicken, like, in something so it's got a little more pop to it. Yeah. Let's throw those bitches on the uh, barbecue when we go over to, uh, you know, our cousin's house for their uh, birthday barbecue that they have. Rather than, like, indulging in uh, hot dogs and whatever else they're going to make, they're going to make mm-hmm. cheeseburgers. And we're going to, you know, yeah, we might have every intention of not eating the bun, but we're probably going to eat the bun. So let's just bring some of our own shit. And you have something that's just a little bit different, just a tiny bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are barbecue sauces that you can buy nowadays that don't have. Yeah. I have one at home that's got, like, one... It's got like one gram of sugar and yeah. it, it is, it's pretty damn good. Um, Primal Kitchen makes a lot of really good products. They make some different uh, dressings. They make some different things that, that work out pretty damn good. Uh, they have a ketchup that I like. It doesn't have a lot oh, of extra. Nice. Yeah. Ketchup. I mean, how great is ketchup? I love ketchup. I, I was wondering if anybody made anything. Primal Kitchen. I'll have to check it out. Primal I'd, Kitchen. I'd, I'll just order some extra because I, I need to order some anyway and cool. I, I can't find it in the damn store. Yeah. So. I tried the uh, uh, Walden Farms ketchup mm. just because I'm like, weird. Oh, dude, it's so gross. Mm. It was like a watered down mm. tomato paste. Like, it's just no good. They do pretty good with some stuff, but they can't win on everything. No, 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 no. You can also throw a little bit of honey on a, on a sweet potato. And it's like, man, that, that really gives Whoa, it a lot. That's dessert right there. Then. That gives it a lot of pop. Hey, have you ever uh, marinated chicken in some like lemon juice or lime? Uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, you can have. I think so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure, li- I mean, being Mexican, you've had to have li- lime yeah. chicken. I mean, they have, there's a ton, ton of that kind of stuff. And not only lime chicken, but they do the same thing with beef a lot of times mm-hmm. too. Um, for some of the tacos and stuff. But man, that is so, It it that is so damn good. Now, when it comes to your vegetables, you can squeeze some lemons on it. I know a lot of this sounds weak. I know a lot of this. I I understand how this sounds. Mm -hmm. These things taste good. You got to trust me on this. And and when you get used to these healthy foods, they fuel your body and they make you feel good. You feel better. You feel stronger. You feel, you get leaner and you get a lot of the results that you want to get. And so it's not weak. You know, I I know you guys are probably thinking like, dude, let's throw down some hamburgers. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, uh, that's, that is sometimes what powerlifting is all about is throwing down some calories, but this is for a different person, a different purpose. Sorry. Um, the next, uh, group of, uh, carbs on the, uh, old menu here is, uh, oatmeal. Uh, I recommend gluten-free oats, but if, uh, well, I'll just say gluten-free oats. We'll stick with that. Um, I'm not a fan of, of the quick oats, but 
if for some reason you feel you have less time than I do, then uh, go for it. But I, what I do is I usually soak the oats overnight. Um, I have been messing with fermenting them as well, where I put uh, some hot water in a pot and I put the oats on the stove. Um, I have like a water purifier thing at my house and it's got hot and cold and it has almost like boiling, boiling water that comes out of it. So I soak the oats in that overnight and then I put uh, uh, a little thingy, like a tablespoon of, uh, of yogurt in there. And that's the way I eat my oats. They're kind of like fermented oats, I guess you'd say. Um, you might not enjoy the flavor of that. I happen to like it, you know, so for me it's good. But um, you can also just soak your oats and you can squeeze a little bit of lemon juice in there. Or you can just soak your oats and just throw some salt in there and put the lid on it. Leave that thing for overnight. When you when you wake up in the morning, pop it on. And when you're cooking up whatever breakfast that you normally have or heating up something for breakfast, um, it'll take a while. Take mm-hmm. eight, ten minutes to cook that thing up. Uh, and you got to stir it here and there so it doesn't stick to the pan or pot. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's great. It gives you, an, it's a nice amount of food too. When you eat oatmeal, mm-hmm. it's just so rich and it, and it like, it's just, uh, it's thick. You know, and so if you don't really love the taste of oatmeal, here's where you can get, I mentioned you can have fruit. So now you can mm. throw some fruit into your oatmeal. You could throw some berries in there. There's a bunch of different things you can do. Um, I also mentioned that you can have some honey. So you can throw some honey in there. Just when you're doing all these things, just just small amounts. We're not We're not trying to turn your oatmeal into a bowl of honey. <laughs> we're trying just to flavor your oatmeal slightly. And the idea and the goal here is to get used to how the greens taste. When you get used to how greens taste and used to how vegetables taste and used to how you get used to what oats are supposed to taste like and what rice is supposed to taste like and what potatoes are supposed to taste like just with some light salt on them or just with a little bit of uh, butter on them or just uh, even sometimes if you take uh, rice and... If you take rice and you cook it with um, some, let's say, some mushrooms and some uh, some beef and you throw it in a pan, holy shit, that has a way different flavor mm-hmm. than if you just eat rice by, like, just the way it normally cooks. Rice yeah. has absolutely no flavor to it, really. It just has a nice texture to it. You throw some salt on it, that kind of changes everything. But if you cook it in a pan with, um, you make almost like a stir fry, mm-hmm. throw a little olive oil in the pan. And don't be afraid to just try. No one really discovers anything or figures out anything without, you know, uh, making shit up. Mm -hmm. Just make some shit up. Throw some olive oil in the pan. Throw some beef in the pan. Uh, Obviously, the rice needs to be already cooked. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you already kind of recognize that. (laughs) Uh, The rice is already cooked. Now you're just kind of heating it up with uh, some beef and throw in some, like, peppers. Um, It doesn't have to be this well-planned out crazy meal where you have 9,000 ingredients. Throw in some peppers, some mushrooms. If you don't like mushrooms, leave them out. But mushrooms have a ton of potassium in them as well. The uh, peppers have some potassium and other and vitamin C and stuff like that in there. Well, now you just made something that went from just really not having a whole lot of flavor because the beef is just going to taste like beef and the rice is just going to taste like rice. Um, you throw some salt in there and that's going to change things a little bit, but it's not going to have a ton of flavor that really pops. Now you throw in some of this other stuff. You throw in those peppers and those mushrooms. You changed everything. It's going to, it's going to taste entirely different. It's going to be way different. Um, even, uh, take some, uh, ground beef, throw it in a pan, cook it up, get everything all nice and hot at the end, chuck some, chuck a little bit of ketchup on there. Hmm. You know, even if, even, even if on this plan, you're not, you don't buy the special kind of primal kitchen, uh, ketchup. I would prefer that you buy ketchup that doesn't have like added sugar and a bunch of crap in it. But even if you use Heinz ketchup, some Heinz ketchup. This is a drop in the bucket, and this is not the conversation. This is not um, this is not the conversation I'm trying to have with everybody. The conversation I'm trying to have with everybody is I'm trying to get them away from junk. Yeah, ketchup could be in the category of junk, but um, I'd rather have you use small amounts of ketchup than to ever have a salad that has a ton of dressing on it, because I know when you use dressing that you're going to use like. Uh, probably, I don't know, six tablespoons of dressing <laughs> just to just to really uh, wet down the vegetables enough to get them down. And that that's going to have an enormous amount of calories in it. And that's not, that's not anything you're allowed to do on this plan. Speaking of that, 
people ask a lot about, uh, and the last source of carbs you can have is honey. And then also, obviously, the fruit kind of falls in that carbohydrate category. So the, the, the carbs you can have, rice, potatoes, oatmeal, honey. Um, in terms of fats, we got olive oil, coconut oil, um, olive oil, coconut oil, uh, avocado oil. Um, there's probably some other oils that I'm leaving out, but on your vegetables, you, you can't use ranch dressing. You can't use all these crappy ingredients. If you want to get some stuff from Primal Kitchen, you certainly can. Uh, they have, uh, some, di- some different types of, um, dressings that don't have, uh, uh, these, uh, polyunsaturated fats that are, uh, shitty for you. Polyunsaturated fats, supposedly, um, or maybe not even supposedly, but through some research I've heard, uh, become part of your cells for up to 21 days and they wreak havoc on your body. Um, I'm not even going to get into all the negatives. You can kind of look it up yourself. Again, if you look up Ray Pete talking about, uh, some of these polyunsaturates, polyunsaturated fats, or even Stan Efforting, they're called PUFAs, P-U-F-A, PUFA. I know it has a funny name. It sounds like FUPA, (laughs) (laughs) which we're also obsessed about in this podcast. Mm -hmm. The FUPA. Um, anyway. Use olive oil on your vegetables. Use um, avocado oil. Or even if you make a good salad, you almost don't even need dressing. You can squeeze some lemon on that bitch and you're done. Have, have a uh, salad that has uh, some greens, some carrots, some uh, peppers, uh, some mushrooms, some, diff- some different flavors in there. Throw some cheese in there. Um, throw some uh, lemon juice on top of that and throw some salt on it and you're good. Vinegar, balsamic vinegar. Um, balsamic vinegar will have sugar in it, but it's, look, it's not the end of the world. We don't have a lot of sugar in this diet. There's some sugar from the fruit. There's some sugar from, I, I, I said you can have honey. I prefer to have like raw honey. By the way, any opportunity you get, try to buy local, you know, try to get the omega-3 eggs, you know, spring, spend the extra couple bucks. I, I think it's worth it. Um, these are all things that like I personally buy into. Mm Mm-hmm. Whether they actually work or not, I don't really know. But I think that when you kind of, when you start to buy into these things and when you have a a belief and a self-belief about it, I think it changes everything because you believe everything's working better and you're believing in yourself more and you're like, this is the program. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. It's a purchase, you know, it's a purchase into what it is that you're trying to do. And to me, it helps keeps you, uh, omega-3 eggs, question mark. Did I say that funny? Omega-3 eggs, yes. They have higher DHA and EPA. Some people just feed chickens like whatever because chickens will eat mm-hmm. anything. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, I I don't know. I, I don't know if you can show like one egg has, you know, I just buy into it. I just do it. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have the opportunity to buy grass-fed, buy it here and there. But if you don't like it, don't worry about it. Don't sweat it. Um you're not going to die faster from having, uh, you know, from having one egg versus the other. You're not going <laughs> to die faster from having, you know, one type of meat, you know, over the uh-huh. other. But whenever possible, try to go local, try to go grass fed, try to go organic. Just do the best you can. Mm-hmm. And if you're like, whoa, like the, it's a freaking $4 difference per pound, then don't do it. Don't worry about it. Don't mm-hmm. sweat it. It's not a huge deal. Whenever convenient, whenever you can, try to lean towards that. If it ain't going to happen, it ain't going to happen. Mm-hmm. The thing I want to point out to people is like, none of the stuff that I mentioned on here tastes like shit. It all tastes really good. We all love meat. We all love eggs. We all love cheese. We all love rice. We all love potatoes. Maybe not everybody has taste buds for oatmeal. We, we all like uh, certain types of fruit. We all like some, t- some uh, certain uh, types of fats. We all like certain types. Well, not everybody likes vegetables, but even myself who has hated vegetables for years, I've, I've learned to uh, enjoy eating some vegetables and you don't have to be eating vegetables all day, but let's just say that you hate eating vegetables, blend up some damn greens in a shake, you know, throw, throw some, now spinach has a different flavor than kale. If you, if you mix up uh, some kale and a chocolate protein shake or a vanilla protein shake works pretty good. If you mix up spinach, Mm, it's got more of it. The spinach takes over. Uh, why first meal should be high protein and vegetables. That's not anything that I really mentioned. Um, but, mm-hmm. uh, 
that's a question that came in from someone on, on Instagram. Um, you know, I, I think that protein is the goal. Protein is the goal. Everything else is secondary and third dairy. Um, but you want to try to get in protein. And a way to get in protein is just to look at food labels and try to look at things that have a higher amount of protein than everything else that it has in it. Mm -hmm. Some people will say that like milk is high in fat, but milk has like eight grams of fat per serving. But then I think it will have closer to like, uh, maybe like 13 or 14 grams of protein in it per serving as Mm -hmm. well. I could be wrong on that. Maybe we can look it up. Yeah. Uh, but it will have some sugar in it. You know, have some uh, lactose in it. But even with the milk, I don't want you drinking tons and tons of milk. Eight ounces a day, maybe two cups a day, you know, so 16 ounces a day, somewhere in there. We don't have have to have enormous amounts of stuff. Same thing with yogurt. So milk has eight grams protein according to, well, that's 1% at uh, one cup. Yeah, so milk has about, there you go, has about, has about a one to one ratio. A lot of meat d- does as well. A lot of uh, a lot of the meats that we buy in the store, the leaner cuts of meat anyway, will have about a one to one ratio. So that's not that's not even bad. That's not even like that's not an enormous amount of. Uh, is that four ounces or eight ounces? Uh, it just says one cup, so I'm assuming eight ounces. Yeah, that's probably about eight ounces. Um, so anyway, that's that's the diet plan, and uh, I know that we're going to be going over this shit quite a bit, but that's. Uh, that's some of the stuff that's going on. And, and Andrew mentioned eating a chicken tortilla soup. Now, did you and your girlfriend take any precautions in making that chicken tortilla soup so it was more more leaning towards being jacked and tan? So, it, I mean, I hope I don't sound too, I don't know, lame for this. But, again, this long night that we, you know, experienced or whatever. So, it was actually uh, just a Costco already pre-made tortilla soup. Mm-hmm. But we got a rotisserie chicken, and so I threw more chunks of chicken in there. Yeah. And my second bowl, I'm like, dude, I'm going to still be way too hungry. Mm-hmm. So I threw in a cup of rice in my next one, and that was like, oh, this is way too much. But what ended up happening is it just it made me uh, more fulfilled, and it was really good. And then right. I, I was good for the night. There um, you go. So just adding just plain white rice to something that was already pre-made that had right. it was full of flavor. Like I'm sure, like the the uh, like whatever uh, macros, whatever the fuck you right. want to call it, was not great. Right. But the pre-made uh, soup. Did you bother to look at the macros, or were you just like yeah? Now so we're no, I, I looked at it and it wasn't awful. Yeah. Um, but like I don't know as far as like other ingredients or yeah. preservatives who, or who cares. But like um, carb content was super low because it was just like. You know, like it's it's mainly sodium. Yeah, and uh, I'm not too worried about that. Um, protein was fairly low for a quote chicken soup, so that's why we added more chicken to it. Uh, just to interrupt you for a mm-hmm. second, uh, somebody said they they can't hear you. Well, you can't hear them because mm-hmm. you need to go on YouTube. You need to go uh, to our YouTube channel, which is Power Project Dot Live. Uh, we're just on here just to kind of throw these up here and there. So, p- apologize that you can't hear them. We're going to work on some different technology mm-hmm. to see if we can uh, get that get that done as well. We're also live on Facebook. You can check it out there as well. Yeah, um, but a- after everything, it was pretty good. Um, You're going to have some things that are going to be like, you know, they're going to be, I call it like an audible. You're going to have some things that are going to be a little different here and there. Um, I don't know. Like, let's say you had it planned out um, the whole week that you're going to go out with your girlfriend Thursday night and you're going to go have dinner. Mm -hmm. But you had it planned to where you're still going to eat healthy. You're going to your favorite restaurant. You're going to get your favorite thing. You guys were both like, yeah, we'll get this appetizer that, you know, doesn't, that, doesn't have a lot of junk in it, you know, and, and you're going to eat the certain meal that you like and you're going to keep everything, you know, like my wife and I go to a place in Davis called Our House. We go there quite a bit and uh, I always get a filet. We order this uh, appetizer that has like some meatballs. Um, I'm sure there's probably more fat in those meatballs than like, you know, I would normally eat. And there's mm-hmm. more of this or more of that. But sometimes things are really a little different. But what if, you know, I'm on my way home from the gym and, uh, you know, my wife says, ah, oh, you know, Quinn got sick at school. She's throwing up. And, well, I might say, okay, well, uh, you know what? I'll uh, stop by Dos Coyote. I'll pick up some food for us. And you know what? There's going to be times where we eat something different. Mm-hmm. Who the fuck cares? 
it's not a huge deal, right? Now, mm-hmm. I'm not going to eat something that's way off base. I'm still going to go for protein first. So I'll probably get a, like a, some sort of chicken bowl. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, depending on the restaurant, like, you know, Mexican restaurant, I'd love to get beans and stuff like that too, but I know they're probably cooked in some oil. It's mm-hmm. probably going to really crush my stomach. So I'll probably get some chicken. I might get some rice. I might get some avocado. I might get some salsa. Maybe I'll get some cheese in there. And again, it's not, it's not the, it's not uh, a Jay Cutler. I'm getting ready for a bodybuilding show meal. It's healthy enough for that particular day. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be rolling in that restaurant every day though, either, which I think that's a big mistake that people make. People think that people honestly think they can go to Chipotle every day <laughs> and you can't, you just can't. And I know there's a lot of ripped dudes and stuff. Uh, and some girls that are uh, in pretty good shape and stuff on, on Instagram that are sharing that. But these are people that have been ahead for a really long time. Mm-hmm. And that's important for people to understand. And a lot of these people too, are they making progress? Are they in better shape? These guys and girls that are posting these pictures of eating in and out and stuff, are they in better shape than they used to be? What gains have they made? What progress have they made? Who do they coach that really has made, you know, has, right. who do they coach that has done, has uh, followed the, the same protocol Mm -hmm. and really made a lot of progress. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to kind of look at. Even somebody like Lane Norton. I like Lane Norton. Lane Norton and I are friends, but Lane Norton's always been skinny. You know, I, I don't have, I don't have Hmm. things in common with somebody that's always been skinny. Yeah. yeah, I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? He's always, he's always been ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm not dismissing any of the information he has. He has outstanding information. And I, I love the fact that Lane Norton is, is in this industry. I think he's helped uh, thousands of people mm-hmm. and, and the information he has helps people decipher between, you know, what's right and what's bullshit. He does a great job of that. Um, and just because he's skinny doesn't, doesn't take anything away from anything. But I'm saying is the way that he, uh, is able to maybe eat certain things. Maybe I'm not, mm-hmm. and maybe the next guy's not, but maybe there's another guy that is right. So it's going to be a little different for each person. But when you see these people that are posting, that they're going like, and I'm not even saying Lane Norton posts that he goes to Chipotle every day, but mm-hmm. there are people that post that kind of stuff and they, they, they think it's funny and they think it's this and that. And I'm just like, there's nothing funny about it. It's, it's a mixed message. Yeah. It's a crap message and it doesn't, it doesn't share, it doesn't help anybody. I yeah. don't think. Yeah. And by skinny, you don't mean like he's scrawny. You just mean like he's, oh, he's, he, he doesn't have an issue with gaining like fat. Yeah. I meant his entire life that he's never had a surplus of fat. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I stand corrected because Lane Norton's jacked. He's not skinny. There you means. go. Uh, he's got, definitely has some pipes on him and he's strong. He's yeah. stronger than I am, especially, uh, when it comes to that squat and when it comes to that deadlift, he's mm-hmm. a wrecking machine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that, uh, you know, again, back to, you know, things like eating out, this is the things that I'd like to try to pull you guys away from, uh, more often. Can you eat out once or twice a week? Sure. Um, you know, you don't want to make it happen every single day. Um, and there's different things that you can eat from different places that isn't necessarily eating out. Like today I had, uh, and actually the last two or three days, I had some stuff from Starbucks, but I didn't eat like a breakfast sandwich from mm-hmm. there. I didn't eat, eat like a lunch sandwich or anything. I didn't have like grilled cheese or something like that. I had, um, their protein pack thing and I had hard boiled eggs, which yeah. they're not cooking the hard boiled egg in any sort of weird oil or anything. It's mm-hmm. just, it's just a hard boiled egg. Uh, and it comes with some cheese. Um, and then I bought another thing of theirs that had some carrots and some fruit in it. And that's what I ate. Yeah. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot more options around you than you think. Yeah. And I think you always just think, oh, there's Jack in the box. Yeah. Well, I mean, like take our situation last night, like it was late. We were, we were really hungry and it would have been so easy to go drive through like an in and out and it would have been totally excusable. Like, you know, we would have made excuses for it, but instead we, we did make we we ate pre-made stuff like you know don't get me wrong i didn't go home and make a homemade meal but we still got stuff that was i mean like i said it's just chicken soup basically and it was all like it wasn't bad at all and it tasted good but it was fast you know because it was already Mm -hmm. pre-made but it wasn't jack in the box you can also cook something like that at home, which would even be a better option, but you can cook a giant amount of it and yeah. you have it all week long. And what's funny is after we were done, I'm like, dude, this tastes like something. And uh, Stephanie actually makes a soup that tastes almost exactly like it, but you're right. She makes a big old like yeah. Home Depot five-gallon bucket full of it, and they it's co- amazing. They copied her <clears throat> recipe. They might have. 
But you can get <laughs> things like a slow cooker. I mean, you can get a rice yeah. cooker. You cook enormous amounts of rice and have, and rice doesn't really, I mean, it takes a long time for rice to go bad in your fridge um, after it's cooked. Um, man, there's, there's a lot of options. And if you're like, man, cooking up that oatmeal every morning is a pain in the ass, cook up a giant thing of it. Oatmeal is totally fine in the fridge after it's mm-hmm. cooked. It, it's nothing weird's going to happen to it. Or do overnight oats or whatever. Yeah, I mean, there's there's ton, there's tons of options that you can make things work in a different way. This guy says he always sabotages his fat loss gains, mm. chasing chasing strength gains. I hate not prepping my fat numbers in lifts when I'm cutting. I don't really understand that last part, but I do understand what he's talking about. Uh, you know, he <clears throat> basically, uh, you know, a lot of people say, "Oh, when I follow that diet, am I going to lose strength?" most of the time diets are to lose weight in most cases. Mm -hmm. Um, most of the diets that I've helped people with over the years are to lose weight. Um, the same process and the same foods that are used to lose weight are actually used to gain weight as well. The only difference is there's more of them. You know, there's more, more of the same foods to gain weight Mm. and it's, uh, you know, less of the same foods to lose weight. Uh, but the food doesn't really change. Although, there may be like an influx of like things like peanut butter, or there may be an influx of butter or bacon. There might be room for some more things like that. Um, you know, so that there might, there might be some other options, uh, available when you're, when you're gaining weight, Mm -hmm. but this is a huge problem that a lot of people face. And it's like, man, if you have, if you have, (laughs) I always talk about trying to figure out what's reasonable. Right. Um, and let's just talk about your personal mindset from the time you wake up till the time you get to work or from the time you wake up until the time you're in public. Do you roll out of bed and do you not care at all what you look like? Do you like not take a shower? Do you not fix your hair? Do you not like, do you just not care? Do you, do you it, like, you know, if you, if you're somebody that just doesn't care, you know, then may, like you don't care about the shoes you got on or, or, or whether you have sweats on or, or jeans or you don't care whether you have a nice polo on or a V-neck or you don't care about anything, then maybe, maybe it doesn't, you know, maybe you're not worried about like losing weight and looking a little bit better and feeling a little bit better. Um, it's not always just about losing weight either. It's about looking more substantial. So it's not really always just about you know, losing 10 pounds of fat or 20 pounds of fat, it's about losing five pounds of fat, but holding on to all the muscle, which will actually in turn make you look more jacked. And I think that's a lot of time people's, you know, the goal that people have. Mm -hmm. But when you're 50 pounds overweight or 60 pounds overweight, why in the hell are you spending so much time in the morning with your hair, girls with your makeup, uh, and girls with like the clothes that they put on guys, with, I mean, guys just don't have that many options when it comes to clothes. Girls have a lot more options. And that's why I usually use girls as an example in this. What, you know, you spend all this time on your hair, you spend all this time in your clothes, you spend time and money on jewelry and everything looks great, but then you're still really heavy. So I'm not saying that you should never dress up, but I'm saying a quicker route to looking good in the morning would be to weigh less. And I'm not trying to be, that's not, I'm not trying to be insulting. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, there is the saying uh, that you can't put whipped cream on shit and make it taste any better. (laughs) Right. I mean, it it could taste a little bit. It can taste better. Yeah. But it's still going to be shit. Right. And it's still going to smell like Mm -hmm. shit. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, what I would like to see people do rather than like spend money and time on these other things, and you hear people say that too about their food. Like, oh man, I can't afford to eat like that. Bullshit. You can't afford to eat like that. You don't have any idea on the ridiculous amount of money that you spend on other bullshit yeah. all the time. Like, yeah. let's just get real. Nobody's dying. Nobody's dying for their next meal. Mm-hmm. Everyone's got some extra, everyone's got a little extra cash to, you know, put a little bit of an investment in their health and look better and feel better. There's, there's so many different ways of doing it. And I, I shared this earlier today with Joey. She uh, asked me, she's like, did you ever have a budget, you know, when you were shopping and, you know, when you were younger and like, what, like, what did that look like? And I said, you know what, Joey, I've never been broke. 
I, I've never ever treated myself as being broke. I've always tried to I've always tried to go for and strive for the best. I've always tried to treat myself the best. It doesn't mean I was always able able to or capable of doing that. Mm-hmm. Um but I always tried, you know, I always was like, what, you know, I'm going to try for the best option for me for right now. Mm. And that's the way I always looked at it too. I was never like, oh, I can't afford that. I think, you know, I can't afford that is, is a, is a recipe to really slow you down and really kind of hamper your progress. When you, you, you just told yourself that you can't afford something like, it's almost like I don't deserve that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it does not really that, that's not really the case. Uh, you know, you're, you're not able to get that for right now, but you're going to be able to get that soon. You know, that's something that you're going to be able to strive for. That's something to strive for. That's not something to put yourself down about. That's not something to get negative about. That's something to be positive about. Like, wow, you know, in a year or two, it'd be great when I can just afford to get whatever the hell I want in this grocery Mm -hmm. store and as much of it as I want. Mm -hmm. That'll be awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's going to happen. And I can't wait. You know, it's going to be cool when that happens next year or the year after or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever you set your mind, Mm -hmm. you set your mind to be. There's a a famous quote from Abraham Lincoln where he says, uh, you can be, you can be as happy as you set your mind to be. Yeah. Like what a fucking simple statement that is. Like, holy crap. (laughs) <laughs> I can, I can determine that. Mm-hmm. And I've said it before on this podcast, you get to pick your friends, you get to pick the food that you eat, you get to pick who you're with the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. You get to pick like everything. You can't pick your parents, <laughs> but you get to actually pick and choose. Like if you don't like your parents, you can move the hell away from them. You get to pick and choose everything in life. And, you know, people just, they tend to kind of, you know, bitch and moan about it, but you have the ability to make these really great positive changes to your life, but yet you keep sticking your vote and sticking your money towards the things that are just pulling you away from those, those goals all the time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, again, you see these guys, like they're freaking trimming their eyebrows and getting their beard all perfect, their hair all perfect (laughs) and doing all this stuff. And it's like, dude, you're fucking fat. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you're fat. You don't look good. Mm -hmm. Like you spent all this time trying to look good and you don't look good. Yeah. (laughs) So I don't know, I don't know why you're trying to like pretend that you look good, but you just don't. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't care what car you drive, what house you have, or whatever the hell else you got going on. Um, If you're not happy, you're not successful. And how can you be happy? The way that you can be happy is being fulfilled by yourself, feeling good about yourself. Mm -hmm. Like you did something. And I think that unfortunately there's so much quote unquote weight that is put on your looks That's, I mean, that's just the way things are. I don't know if that's human nature, if that's society. I don't know where it comes from, Mm -hmm. but the way that you look and the way that you treat other people, the way that you treat yourself is just so important that you can't escape it. It is a huge part of success. And if you don't look the part, I think that it makes it harder. It makes it harder to be the success that you want to be. Now there's some people Sometimes, like maybe like someone like Warren Buffett, right? Warren Buffett is basically the most successful man that like has ever walked the face of the earth, or at least one of them. Um, he owns like something like 800 businesses or something like that. Something wild like that. He, he's kind of known as like the entrepreneur of all entrepreneurs because he's run so many different types of businesses. Mm-hmm. But like he's always been a little bit chubby. He's always been a little bit overweight. But also too, he probably never bitches about it. Like he mm. probably, not that he doesn't care about his looks at all, but like he probably feels like he, he probably feels like he's happy enough with the way that he looks that he can keep going. Right. Mm-hmm. But then you have these other people that complain about it all the time and they complain and they'll say, oh man, I wish I could go on a low carb diet or I wish oh. I could, you can, come on, yeah. dude, you can, you kidding me? You can't do it. Like what a pussy. Like why? No, you don't understand though. My family doesn't eat that way. No, no one in my area lifts like that. I, I, you know, I wish I had a gym like super training cause I, I would lift like that every day. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you wouldn't. You want to know why? Cause super training gym is free and it's been free for a really long time. There's about 30 people that train here. That's it. Mm-hmm. There's nobody else. <laughs> cause it's hard. It's not easy. Right. You know, it's simple. It, the gym's free. You got to participate. 
You got to be into other people's workouts and uh, it's going to consume some of your time because you can't just come in here and just haphazardly do your own lift and keep to yourself. You got to be involved with other people and you got to help other people. But the gym's free. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The gym's free and you figure the place would be stacked with like 300 people. Yeah. But we've never, ever even had to, to develop any sort of waiting list or anything. How crazy is that? It's nuts. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I know. I was I was trying to explain that to uh, who that I don't remember who it was. I think it was uh, someone's neighbor or something. I don't, anyway, whoever it was, explaining like the whole thing, and he's like, "Oh my gosh! Like, is there like how do you sign up to be a member? I'm like, well, we don't we don't have that." And he's like, "But but it's free. You guys have to have like hundreds of people daily trying to come in and train." I was like, "You would think that, but the gym kind of it it we it filters people out." Yeah. Like even if somebody does show up, they kind of don't stick around. It's right. It's really weird. Not because I would imagine someone's like, oh, you guys are a bunch of dicks then. <laughs> but no, it's just, it, it's hard. It's, it's a lot of hard work and it, it's, uh, it, it's once you're in though, and you're on the team, it's, it's kind of amazing. Like these guys are all like their family, right? Yeah. You know, I, I've never felt that anywhere. Obviously I've never had a, there's no other super training gym out there, but, uh, it, it was just funny because he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, ah, you don't get it. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, th- this place is different. This guy, um, Christian, I think his name is, he says, Costco is the solution to cost-effective healthy eating. And then, you know what else someone else is going to say? I don't have a Costco membership. <laughs> yeah, dude, we get yeah. it. Like, okay, but figure it out. Yeah. You know, borrow your mom's or some shit or like. We're just, I mean, Walmart's free and it, it's, yeah. I mean, yeah. There's other options, you know, don't, don't, yeah. you know, don't use stuff like that. I think that guy, Christian, he made a great point. Uh, deer season has begun, get begun. Time to load up that freezer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, man, there's, you got tons. Everyone ha- everyone knows friends are like hunters and like. Dude, like the, those people can't even keep up with the amount of meat that they have sometimes. So bum some shit off of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of the guys in the chat box, he's, he's been around a lot and I don't mean to call him out. My gym sucks. I'd be there if I lived close. <laughs> How right. many times do we hear that? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. Of, yeah. Well, there's plenty I mean, of people that live close. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of people that live in this area. Yeah, but I mean, people that from like, you know, mm-hmm. other states are just like, yeah. all right, move here and you can train here for free. Right. Like, uh, no, uh, I, I wasn't being serious. Yeah. This guy is really cool, but uh, I mean, it's just funny because like for the uh, tomorrow seminar, oh man, if I lived closer, I would go. <laughs> well, right. What, what other uh, opportunity are you going to have where the destination that you're traveling to is free? Yeah. You know, like if you want to go on vacation or whatever, you have to get there, then pay when you get there <laughs> and what, you know, so it's like. Yeah. Like, fuck, man, it's an well, amazing chance. With like, um, with some of you guys that have kind of signed on to like work here and stuff like, mm-hmm. I, uh, you know, uh, not everybody has needed like, you know, uh, me to like, you know, sell them on the place or anything. But mm-hmm. when I was talking to Terrell, I was like, dude, it's simple. Move here. I'll change your life forever. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I, and I, I'm dead serious and, and it has nothing to do with like, I'm going to show you, you know, I, I'm going to, you know, show you the right way to live your life or nothing weird like that. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a great community. There's great people here. You're going to learn a lot of great stuff. And if it works out and you end up working here the rest of your career and, and, uh, you end up moving up in the company and making tons of money and the company keeps, uh, flourishing and well, that's cool. Mm -hmm. But even if you're here for a year, it's going to change your life. And I already know that because it's changing. It changes my life all the time. Mm -hmm. changes your life all the time. Um, Jessica Mm -hmm. Smith. I mean, everybody here, their lives have been changed by the opportunities inside this building. And it's really been, it's really, you can see it more in certain people than you can see it in in others. Um, but man, this place is, this place is fun. You know, we were all giving Jessica a bunch of crap because she's like going to a wedding <laughs> and yeah. I was like, don't leave. I was like, are you part time? Like, what, like, what, what are we supposed to do? Like, you're yeah. always here. You always help us. I don't know what's going this on. Is, I was telling her like, this is how it starts. Like, okay, you're, you're out for this weekend and then all of a sudden you're out all weekends and then like it's half a week and then we don't see you anymore. Just keep sliding downhill. Just, <laughs> just busting her 
Balls, lady balls. Busting her lady nutsack. <laughs> um, you didn't talk about salt on the uh, on the diet or the not diet, whatever the mm-hmm. yep. be, be less fatterist <laughs> yep. diet. Yeah. Um, just I mean, any uh, yeah, throw some salt in there. You know, salt salt some of your foods. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, hydration is a big is a big thing. So, um, how much water should you drink? You know, uh, we had a very simple thing yesterday that. Uh, girl we had on the podcast, Gabrielle Lyon, she said, you know, drink as much as you can. <laughs> I thought that was actually an interesting uh, concept. But, you know, on a more serious note, um, have, you know, at least three glasses of water every day, three just giant glasses of water mm-hmm. that are just water. Just have three glasses of water every day. Now, the le- rest of the liquids that you fill in throughout the day, and, and I imagine most of you are pretty active, so you're probably, you're probably drinking a good amount of water. You have some people say, have a gallon every day. Hmm. Um, there's some math equations that you can look up um, where you can have like, uh, you know, so you're supposed to have like 67% of your body weight <laughs> in ounces of water a day, which is actually, I don't know, I don't know where this uh, came from. Mm-hmm. But it actually is a very effective, uh, it's a very effective amount to have every day. For me, that came out to be over a gallon of water every day. Hmm. I don't think I need that much. Um, I could probably have three quarters of a gallon every day and be totally fine. Um, but just, just mess around with it, yeah. you know, and if you're, just drink more water than you did yesterday and, and work on it for a little while. Mm-hmm. If you pee all day long and it, you know, it's a real nuisance and and you've been you, you've been feeling fine previously, mm-hmm. then maybe cut it back a little bit. Mm-hmm. But if you have headaches middle of the day, you have fatigue, could simply just be water. A yeah. lot of times, fatigue and headaches are just they're just related to just water. Sometimes Isn't that crazy. Sometimes too much caffeine, things like that. But sometimes it's it's that simple. It's just your body's like, hey, dude, like I don't know what's been going on over there, but you need to start drinking more water. Yeah. So then, what about caffeine? Caffeine, I would say. You know, have a cup of coffee every day, you know, if you like coffee, have a cup every day, um, and try to keep it, uh, sometime before if you're going to bed at like, if you're going to bed at like anywhere between any time past nine o'clock, I would say, you know, the cutoff would be around 2 Mm PM, you know, try to, try to cut it off early. If you like to work out in the PM and you like to go to bed, you know, at a reasonable time, nine, nine, 10 o'clock, something like that. Uh, stay away from those pre-workouts, in my opinion. I, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's a good idea to rely on that kind of stuff. Um, in terms of sauces and stuff like that, we did mention you can have some different things. Mustard, a lot of times, is something that people will use here and there because uh, mustard usually doesn't have hardly anything in it except for like salt, vinegar. Mm-hmm. It doesn't usually have that much like you know junk in it. Um, you want to stay away from things like teriyaki sauces and barbecue sauces. Typically, they just are loaded with a bunch of crap. There are some barbecue sauces on the market um, that have less sugar nowadays and, and things like that. But anyway, I'm really excited about the seminar for tomorrow, and uh, I'm excited to help people you know, through this diet plan. But seminar tomorrow, I'm going to hammer talking about consistency a lot. Mm. Um, a lot of you guys are going to be able to follow along. We will be, what, on Facebook Live, on yeah. Bodybuilding.com's uh, Facebook? Bodybuilding.com, and then if I can uh, work it, well enough and then we'll stream probably on our uh, main channel hmm. i just got to run that through the uh the proper personnel to make sure that that's okay hmm. personnel personnel that just walked in mm-hmm. now we, we we should stop talking we, we should probably stop the podcast stop everything nobody chat anything anymore Smokey mm-hmm. just walked in we're all gonna be in trouble i thought he was gone he's the general manager <laughs> get it because he's so mean mean yeah mm-hmm He's got a mean, anyway, mean squat. we should get going anyway because I got to pee, and I don't. I wanna, really got to pee. Yeah, want to <laughs> race to pee? Uh, if we share the same stall. Hmm? <laughs> anyway, strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later.